Welcome to the Bronx Aerosol Arts Documentary Project. Today is February 27th, 2024. My name is Stephen Payne, Director of the Bronx County Historical Society. And we're here for uh, really legendary oral history with Charmin 65, the first female graph writer from the Bronx. We're going to get into that in a little bit. We have a, a group of uh, folks here who might weigh in and, and ask, ask Charmin some questions also besides me. We have Staff 161. We have Kurt Boone. Uh, we have Pastor Crespo, the librarian and archivist here. And we have Bot. Um, and we'll be doing one with Bot 707 later on as well. Um, so thank you very much, Charmin, for being here with us today. And why don't we start off by asking you to say whatever you might know about your family history and background and how they ended up in the Bronx. Okay. Um, my Going back to my grandmother, she was well, my father's mom. She was in North Carolina. And uh, they were a bunch of bootleggers. Okay. What part of North Carolina? Uh, like out in the uh, country? Greenville. Oh, yeah. Greenville. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. When it was in the country. When ah, it was the country. And then there's my grandmother from my mother's side. Um, they own their own land. Um, she owned her own store, wow. which she had in her house. But that's pretty much how it was done in the South. Yeah. And running back to my grandmother on my dad's side, she was a college-educated woman. Wow. So. Do you remember what college? It, no, it was to? one of those black colleges. Okay, I, yeah, sure, I never... Sure. Uh, that's something I need to... That's in to... South Carolina, huh? No, that's in North Carolina. Oh, okay, okay, okay. The other okay. side of the family. That South was my Carolina. dad's mother. I see. Mm -hmm. I see. Wow. Wow. Um, and how did they make their way to the Bronx or that side of the family? Well, they stayed in the South, but my mother, she migrated to <sighs> New York. And my father, he initially migrated to California, and then he w made his way to the Bronx, to, yeah, to the Bronx. And that's where he met my mother. Well, rather he stalked my mother and scared the life out of her. <laughs> I wanna hear more about that in a second, but why don't you talk some more about your, uh, uh, your other side of the family and their history? Um, well, my grandfather, uh, he used to run liquor. Yeah. And um, it was, you know, they were country folk. And so they had these little bottles, what they call nips now. Yeah, sure. And they had it back then. And so it was a big thing with the country folk that we have these. They were so intrigued by the little bottles of liquor. So they sold that. And my grandmother, she was educated, but she did domestic work. Sure, sure. She, um, she well, now what they would consider catering, she catered large events for the wealthy whites of yeah. North Carolina. And it pissed her off that she never got the credit that she deserved. Yeah. So she stopped. She would read in the paper, oh, Mrs. So-and-so had an amazing party. The, the, the food was divine. The, the uh, desserts were amazing. And never saying nothing about Harriet. Uh -huh. So that annoyed her. So she stopped. She just quit. And then she went on to making drapes. She, okay. she made drapes for the rich white people. And um, that's how much, she, that's pretty much how she made her money, as well as washing clothes. Sure. She washed the uh, businessmen's shirts. And um, they always brought them to her because she had a way with doing laundry, getting the white shirts white without using a ton of bleach and what have you, and uh, starting, starching the shirts perfectly. Um, I can give you an incident where um, one of the, the men who she washed his shirts and pressed his shirts, his wife was very rude to her. And my grandmother said, well, you know what? You can find somebody else to do your wash. To his shirts yeah and uh, she went home that woman went home and um, he came back to my mother my grandmother 
and she was pretty beat up. Mm -hmm. His wife, he beat her up. Yeah. And he told her in front of my grandmother, if she doesn't wash my, if she doesn't do my shirts, pretty much your ass is grass. Yeah, yeah. And she apologized to my grandmother with a bloody lip, black eye, crying. And my grandmother said, oh my God, I had no idea that he would do that to her. Yeah. And she felt bad. And she told him, look, don't worry about it. And he made her tell my grandmother, I will never, ever speak to you that way, in that manner, ever again. Wow. Wow. She was good at whatever she did. She was really good at it. And did you have the chance to visit your uh, family down in North Carolina when you were growing up? Yes. Okay. My grand oh, man. I could do anything and get away with it. Oh, yeah. Because I was named after her. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, so, sure. Yeah, it was her namesake, so wow. I could do anything. Wow, and I know you have the story about um, uh, one of your, your grandmas and uh, going to a bank. If you want to share that story, if not. Oh, yeah. absolutely. My grandma, my grandmother, Ari Sanders Jackson, uh, she was an entrepreneur. Uh, she had a candy store. And uh, she sold candy, and she made money. Um, she sold corn, because she had, like, corn for miles. <laughs> so she would take it to a mill and have it ground and sell, sure. sell it and whatever. And um, she went to a bank. She wanted to save her money in a bank. Yeah. And she went to a bank, and uh, the man that was in charge of the bank, told her niggers cannot have any money in this white establishment. Mm -hmm. And so I said, Graham, what did you, how did you feel? She said, I was so angry. And he said, here, gave her two banks to here, put your money in this. And the banks depicted us, you know, black people in the Aunt Jemima way and uh, step and fetch it sort of way. Yep. With the you put the coin in the man's hand and you pull, push the lever in the back and his eyes rolls up in the back of his head and the, puts the coin in his mouth. And on the back of it said, Jolly Nigger Bank. Mm -hmm. And I have those banks. Wow. I have both of those banks. And so I said, Graham, what, did, you know, what were you thinking? She said, I wanted to bash him over the head with it. She said, but I know they would have put me in jail. They would have killed me. Yeah. She said, in that time, no jail. Absolutely. They would have killed me. Absolutely. And so I said, well, what did you do? She said she thought about him and his history, and she knew his history. And she said, they were poor crackers. Mm -hmm. Those were her exact words. Mm -hmm. She said, I remember they were running around in the mud, in the clay dirt. They had no shoes. Their father was a drunkard. She said, and I made sure I told him that in front of everyone in the bank. She said, I remember. She said, why are you talking to me like this? Your father was a, <clears throat> excuse me, your father was a drunkard. Yeah. And my husband and I sent meal so you guys wouldn't starve because your dad would get drunk and spend all the money. She said, um, my, father, my, my husband and my sons would cut wood to keep you guys warm for the winter, yeah. else you would have frozen to death. Because yeah. you guys were little. They were little. She, I said, Graham, they were small. She said, yeah, they were little. They couldn't pick up an ax and cut wood. Uh -huh. And the poor mother stayed uh, pregnant, barefoot and pregnant. Wow. So she said after she exposed him for the poor trash that he was, um, she said he came over to her. He was humble. Um, you know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say those ugly things to you. And, and she was like, you know, and she said in the back of her mind, she, he could stick it in his ear. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> Did um, either your mom or your dad or both talk about what led them to make the decision to leave their homes and in one case go to New York, in one case go to California, then New York? Um, just life. Yeah. My mother's first husband, he was not a nice man. Yeah. And so she left. She took, she took my, um, siblings. Sure. She, she brought them to New York. Yeah. And, uh, that's how she got here. And my dad, he went 
he was in the Navy. Okay. So he was stationed somewhere out in California. Yeah. And he liked it there. And then for some reason or another, I don't know why, he opted to come to New York. Okay. Yeah. When when was he in the Was he in... I know. I have a picture of him being in... In 1944. Oh, so okay, so he was he was in World War II then. Yes. Wow. Yes, my dad was in, and my and his his grandfather was in the Spanish American War. Wow, wow. Did do you know if your father um, ever was stationed or you know on any fronts during World War II? I don't know if he. A lot of I know he was on that. a ship and they were under fire. Okay. And I remember Dad saying, the. I don't know if it was the Captain Admiral. I don't know the exact titles. Yeah. Wanted him to run live ammo across the ship. And my father told him, I don't do anything that I don't have a chance at winning. Uh-huh. And uh, he said he was brought to another a higher, a higher person. And the person said, well, look, man, get somebody else to do it. We never had this. We'll probably never have anybody else refuse this in 100 years. So... <laughs> They got someone else to do it, okay, but my yeah. dad refused to do it. Good for him. Good for him. <laughs> <laughs> he was nobody's fool. Yeah. Yeah. So. Wow. Um, and did your mom and dad, did, did both of them settle in the Bronx first in New York, or did they live other places in my New York? My mother you know? settled in the Bronx. Okay. Straight now, to the Bronx. No, she, uh, no, no, she was in Manhattan. Okay. Because I remember, I went to a hospital, I think it was St. Luke's Hospital. Yeah. This is maybe many years ago. And the lady, the receptionist, she looked in the computer and she says, wow, you guys were here when you were a baby. So that's how I know my mother wow. settled in Manhattan. Okay. She initially was in Manhattan. And I don't know whatever made her go to the Bronx, but she yeah. did. And um, that's where my father met, stalked <laughs> my mother, scared her. Yeah, you want you want to tell some of the stories you heard about your parents' first meeting and then how they got together and all of that. Well, my mother was a she was a voluptuous woman. Yeah, and my father liked voluptuous women, <laughs> and he saw her. I think it was Union Avenue in the Bronx. Okay, and he saw her walking. She had come from the store, and he was you know how you guys hey how you doing. I'm talk to you. What's your name? And my mother's like, I'm ignoring this guy. I don't know him <laughs> from a can of paint. And she said she walked to her friend's house. She was visiting a girlfriend of hers. And she said she noticed my father kept following her. So she walked into the building. <laughs> he walked into the building. She, said oh, she no. walked up the stairs and she could hear him walking. So she walked faster. He walked faster. She ran. He ran. <laughs> So by the time she got to her girlfriend's door, she was banging on her door in a panic, open the door, open the door. Some guy is trying to, to get me, trying yeah. to harm me. And um, her girlfriend opened the door, let her in. And of course, mom said, close the door. And within a few moments, few seconds, she heard the tapping on the door. And my mother said, don't open the door. That's him. He's probably, you know, he's going to come in here and he's going to kill us both. And... She opened the door and she said, oh, man, that's Floyd. I, I know him. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's how my dad met my mother. Wow. That's quite a meeting. <laughs> yes, that poor woman, my mother was scared to death. So did they start dating after that then? Yeah, they talked yeah. and, you know, then they dated and they became a couple. Okay, so so where where where's the first place that they lived, and and how long was it before you came along? Um, it was on Union Avenue. Okay, yeah, uh -huh. in the Bronx, and um, I came along, and uh, well, no, I was was I there? No, I came along. Yeah, I came along, and my mother moved back to Manhattan. I see. I see. That's okay. how I got that information about myself being. A baby in St. Luke's Hospital. I see. So, I see. <laughs> and for whatever reason, they moved back to the Bronx. Yeah. And I remember living on Fail Street, ten fifty seven Fail Street, and uh, lived there for many years. Yeah. What are some of your earliest memories there? 
Oh, man. I remember <laughs> we were kids. We would play Scalzies. Oh, sure, sure. We'd um, have we'd open up the pump, shoot the pump. Uh, we'd have water balloon fights, snowball fights. Uh, it was it was it was a time where a child was active. Yeah, you know, we only had one chubby kid in the block. I can remember every block, every neighborhood had one chubby kid. Now you have kids that are suffering from obesity. Sure, sure. Because of the lack of going out and play, running, and just having a good time, playing ring alivio, run catch kiss. Uh-huh. Uh, you guys know what I'm talking about. Edward, why are you sitting there like you don't know? <laughs> you know you was out there running, oh, catching yeah. those girls to kiss them. Double Dutch, right? Double, double Dutch. Dutch. Double, double Dutch. Dutch. And we did double orange because that was when you jumped in the rope. We turned backwards and you yeah. jumped in with the two ropes. Wow. Did you, did you, were you good at double Dutch? I was excellent. I was good at whatever I did. <laughs> Of course, you know you had certain like girl teams, right? Oh, yeah. That, right? Were you part of one of those girl teams with double dutch at any time? Well, we at that at, during our time, we didn't have these teams like they have now. That double dutch is like an can be an Olympic sport yeah. and what have you. We didn't have that. We just had kids in the block who were playing and having a good time. Yeah. Where, where where would you all play? Was there a schoolyard near you or just in the street? No, in the street. Yeah, yeah. Hot peas and butter. Do y'all remember oh, that? Oh, hot peas and butter. Yeah, you all remember that. Okay. Get, get beat with that belt. Get whopped with that belt. That's right. <laughs> 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 and uh, what was that? Uh, Ring Olivia. Uh-huh. Uh, what was the other one? Hide and go seek. Hide and go seek. Monkey in the middle. Monkey in the uh, middle. Um, what was that horse way? You had to, you, everybody would bend over and you would have to run and you'd jump on their backs. Johnny and on the pony. Johnny, oh, on, Johnny the pony. on the pony. Johnny on the pony. Oh, that's right. Wow. Yeah. I remember those games. So, well, yeah. I mean, ask yourself, right? right? Um, I'm, I'm generally from your <laughs> neighborhood, um, the South Bronx, from the South Bronx, right? Oh, ever. Don't I ask see. me. You know I'm from the South Bronx. Uh, so, um, <laughs> South, South Bronx. We kind of more or less uh, shared the same uh, jurisdictional area. I wasn't right on your block, but I was like uh, make, like a train station away. Simpson right? Street. Right. I, yeah, I was, you was on Simpson. Right? Yeah, we was, no, uh, so our I train was, station my, stop was Simpson Street. Okay, so my train station was Prospect Avenue. Prospect Avenue. Right? Now, the, um, uh, the local uh, precinct, right, was the 41st precinct. You remember that 41st precinct? Fort Apache. They okay, made a movie you. about it. Okay. So I didn't have to say that, but uh, so uh, you know, I said Fort Apache. Yeah. So um, I remember that neighborhood as being one of the more, um, I mean, I had my front, and you just, you, 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 you acknowledge that you had your front. You know, kids you generally make their own fun, right? Out of whatever circumstances there is, even more in torn areas, you know, kids just find stuff to play with, right? Even if it, it's the old, you know, shell missing or something, you know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, <clears throat> you remember the devastation of Port Apache, that area? Well, when we were kids, we didn't look at it as devastation. Mm -hmm. We looked at it; that was just the neighborhood. Yeah. You know, now I look at it and I says, wow, you know, it was a poor neighborhood. I never looked at it as being devastated, yeah. a devastated neighborhood. Okay. Because you okay. had everything, everything we you needed. We had everything we right? needed. And, and how many, well, I guess probably when you were a kid, they're, they're probably, all the buildings were standing, but on your block were there any buildings that burned down? There were no abandoned buildings when I was coming up, when uh -huh. I was a kid. I saw the abandoned buildings when I became a teenager, uh -huh. exactly. 17, 16. I saw the, the burned out buildings on Charlotte Streets. Uh -huh. That was when the, the landlords were paying people to burn the buildings down so they could get people out and sell the buildings or whatever, yeah. whatever they decided to do with that's them. right but when we were children there was no such thing as an abandoned uh -huh. building and and why don't you talk some more about uh maybe other adults in the neighborhood 
you know, with, whether it's parents of your friends or neighbors, uh, their presence, because I'm sure you couldn't do anything down the street without your mom here. Miss Arlene, <laughs> Miss Arlene. But be in that window. <laughs> There's always. And you know who's, I, I'm going to share with you whose mother that was. That was Dougie Fresh's mother. <laughs> she was a big woman too. She was not big and wide, but tall, statuesque, beautiful woman. She would, she would have no problem with bopping That's you it. upside your head. <laughs> so Dougie Fresh, for you don't, who don't know, is one pioneer uh, uh, human beatboxes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, he wasn't Dougie Fresh then. He was just Douglas. <laughs> he was our little Douglas. He was a little fella. He was a, he was such a cute guy. Wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So let me ask you something, right? What block was that? Now, we moved from 1057 Fail Street to right around the corner to 1092 East 165th Street. Ah. And no, we lived in 10, did we live in 1092? I think Dougie's, Dougie and his family lived in 1090. Yeah. Okay, so uh, where did Hole Avenue, H-O-E? That was right that? around the corner where Ray B lived. Okay, uh, okay. So um, do you remember the, um, the PAL that was on Hole Avenue? Absolutely, I remember the PAL, I remember the Casita Maria. Uh -huh. I remember uh, uh, what's the, St. John's Church. They used to have bingo there. I remember St. Athanasius. Right. Um, I made my communion there oh, at St. Saint Athanasius. Saint Athanasius. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, so that's interesting. So if I was to say to you, I saw on the lake, what would you say? I would say, Wa alaikum salam. Okay. So, so. And uh, it's assalam alaikum, okay. not alaika. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So, so, um, it was. Yes. Okay. So, interesting. Um, okay. So, that's very interesting. Um, so on your block, right? Um, what was the general ethnic makeup? Was it all black people or all Spanish it people? It was black and Puerto Rican. Uh-huh. It was black, black and, and Puerto, Puerto Rican. Rican. Yes. So you mentioned that that ethnicity, Puerto Rican. Um, of course, um, now in New York, you see, uh, um, I remember a lot of Puerto Ricans. Too. Yeah. Uh, we, we didn't say Puerto Rican. We say Puerto Puerto like no, Puerto, Puerto Rican. Rican. <laughs> I got to <laughs> tell you how my aunt... I will go back to that, how my aunt used to <laughs> call them. Puerto Rican. All right. So, um, and, um, now, so on, on my block, on Huey Place, you know, um, which is close to Prospect Avenue, what's that name? So, uh, there was like a little separation culturally with African Americans and people from PR, right? Um, Not really. Not in my block. Well, we were all we all hung out together. We yeah. all played Skelzy together. I mm -hmm. remember when the gangs came in and they said they were going to make us join their gangs, and we had a few girls. Mm -hmm. I remember my one of my bestie Lourdes, whose grandmother taught me Spanish. Oh wow! Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay, wow. so that's that's interesting. So was that? That uh, camaraderie between the groups, um, the Hispanics, Puerto Ricans, yeah. and the African Americans, was that just with the young people or what, what, what that with the older people? Well? well, being a young person at that time, it was always just young people. When I went to Lorda's house, her grandmother, well, we, I used to call her Abuela. I, I used to say, Hi, Abuela. She said, No, they may hi. I said, Como esta, Abuela? <laughs> <laughs> She said, bien, gracias. I said, todo bien. So, <laughs> one of the things that kind of like was taken back would be is to show you me and you, right? So, like, um, music, right? Um, a music, uh, the late 60s, early 70s, right? Um, like, uh, salsa music, right? Mm -hmm. Did you hear a lot of salsa music? Absolutely. Right? Did you like it? I loved it. Yeah, and talk, talk some more about the music you heard in the neighborhood. Okay, up. now, oddly enough, 
my bestie, another bestie, Ray B954. Uh-huh. He was black and his father was Jewish. Sure. So Ray and I listened to all different sorts of music. I mean, we listened to Edgar Winters. We listened to, uh, yeah, uh, we weren't just stuck with just soul music, R&B, and then, of course, we graduated to hip-hop. He and I were into all different types of music. And, um, yeah. Okay, so what is one of your, your, your favorite artists from your youth? I mean, as far as music. I have so many. I just can't. Okay, so name <laughs> about three of them. Okay. <laughs> I love the Rolling Stones. Okay. I love... Stevie Wonder. Uh-huh. I loved, oh my goodness, uh, what was that uh, group? Uh, the Temptations. Temptations. I loved Confunction. I loved Slave. I love, there was so many, it's just, I can't pinpoint one sort of music that I like. Yeah. I even, my mother took me to see opera. Wow. Okay. Yeah. My mother was, she was pretty cultured. Wow. What school did you go to? I went I mean, to school. about grade school, and then I started out in public school seventy five. Here that seventy five. Okay? That's on Fail Street. Okay, and what was that like for you? I had a good time there, but then um, I had a really weird teacher, and you know, I, I was naughty, you know, just talkative, blah, 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 blah. and she had these horrible scales on her, and she put her hand over my mouth, and I hit her with a. The, the waste paper basket. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so, so was she a, a, a creation on it? Yes, she was. Mm-hmm. Okay, so uh, interesting. That's, that's still grade school, right? Yeah, that was still uh, yeah, grammar school. Okay, so like like uh, 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 third, fourth, fifth grade? Yeah. All right. Um, so were all the teachers in your school? At that time, Caucasian? Yes, they were. Mm-hmm. You didn't see any black teachers? Not a black teacher. Anyway. Okay, um, so most of the neighborhood was black and Hispanic, mm-hmm. and um, and um, the school had no black or, or Hispanic educators. None. Interesting. Okay, so um, from there, what what school did you go to after that? Well, after that, I got transferred out. Well, my mother decided to put me into Catholic school. Oh, uh, what Catholic oh, school? school huh? Yeah, Catholic school. I went to uh, Saint Athanasius. Okay. With Father Giganti. Father Giganti. Yeah. <laughs> who was a no nonsense type of priest. Oh yeah. Interesting. No okay. nonsense. So um so we'll come back to the school. So you're in junior high school now, right? No, I'm still in it? no, I'm still in a grammar school. Oh, six okay. seventh sixth, seventh grade. Okay, so what junior high school did you go to? You remember, you know, you, you remember be, it being called junior high school, right? Yes, I re- I went to course, junior course high now school. They call it intermediate school. I know, I'm aware of that. <laughs> they um, but the Catholics, you know, have that. They, they were all in the same school. Yeah, yeah. So then so they're, they're I went no to school junior high school 123 for one year. Where's that at? That's in the Bronx as well. Okay, in the same neighborhood? Yes, okay. and I excelled in science. You like science? Yeah, I did well in science. Okay, interesting. All right, so after that, the school, uh, high school, what high school did you go to? Bronx High School of Science. Bronx High School of Science. Yeah. That's a good school. Wow. And where was that located? In the Bronx. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Did you take a test in that school? Yes. That's interesting. Right, um, so that's probably around the same time, right? The junior high school, right? Uh, which was a parochial school for you? Yes. Uh, yeah, and and you said one twenty three. Junior high school one twenty three. That was a public school. It right. wasn't parochial. That's probably. It wasn't about, a Catholic school. Okay, so uh, that's probably around the time where I eventually met you, right? Um. So, um, and the circumstances of me meeting you, right, wasn't necessarily nothing to do with school or anything like that. It had to do with, like, spray paint markers and all that. Riding on the subway. Right? (laughs) (laughs) So, um, your introduction 
right? Marcus, right? What year was that? Oh. Or what Let's grade see. were you in at that? Um, let me see. I think, I think. Having a senior moment, um, I can remember writing my name on a billboard on Simpson Street. Do you remember that big billboard on Simpson Street? Mm -hmm. um, it, was on, it was on the train station. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember going there. I rem remember that they used to I put up the signs. on the street. I no, mean, no, it was up up in the, I think it's still there. Yeah, the subway station. Yeah, and it was, and you could, you could see it was really big. And the guy, and remember, they used to use sheets of paper and glue and to put that stuff up. And one day I saw them with the ladder. And that is when, well, I'm going to say this. That's when I got up there, I went there with a ladder, and I wrote my name with a magic marker. You could barely see it. Barely. How old was you? Thirteen. Interesting. Okay. Maybe thirteen. Um, and Maybe. that was with a magic marker. And I could hardly see it. Yeah. But I, you, you know, I had to get people to really look at it. I said, "That's my name up there." Okay. So, what name did you write? Charmin. One sixty-five. I wrote one sixty-five. Okay. Uh -huh. Interesting. Okay. What stimulated you? Because you, you, your um, birth name is not not Sean, right? <laughs> Don't be a smart ass. <laughs> uh, I'm just asking, you know. You know uh, very well. Okay, well, I'm just saying. So, so well, what stimulated you to write Sean in '65? Because I always uh, I remember a guy named Raymond Freeman, and I get, you know he, he was just kissing the girl, so he gave me a kiss. He said, "You have the softest lips." He always said I had really soft lips. And he said, oh, I want to kiss you again. I said, no more. But, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and from that, I remember just being so soft. And always saying, you're so soft. You're squeezably soft. And, and uh, that's where the name Charmin came from. So it didn't come from the tissue. No, it came, Charmin, from, Charmin. came from Raymond Freeman. Wow. Sharon, don't get mad. This is before you and Raymond were even dating. <laughs> <laughs> Charmin, do you okay, remember so, um, what uh, what kind of inspired you to to get your name up there in the first place? Had you seen uh, other tags around? Where did you see them? Yeah, um, initially I started out destroying the bathrooms. Yeah, yeah. I would always, I would, they would wash my name off, and I said, "Damn, I yeah." I said, "How can I?" I said, "I got to figure out a way to keep her from washing washing my name off the walls." So I looked at the ceiling. So I climbed up, saw the stall. Was this at St. Athanasius? Um, yeah. Oh, okay. So we're, we're talking, you were doing that, what, 11, 12 even? Yeah, just in the bathroom, uh -huh. just writing my name. That's interesting about the, um, the ladies room, right? Um, um, a lot of the schools back then were like, uh, they weren't co-ed. Either you was going to a male school or female school. Did you have that type of thing? No. You always went to a co-ed school? Yes. That's great. Okay, so um, I had that experience too, but mostly co-ed school. And I used to like to write in bathrooms too. <laughs> right? Now, here was my curiosity now, right? I, I, I basically, I, I would say I started tagging in school, in, in school, school, in the bathrooms, right? Drawing stuff, actually, on, in the stalls and stuff. Right? Now, it seemed like that the, the male restrooms always had tags. Now, I didn't go in the ladies' rooms, right? Now, I was, of course, you were in ladies' rooms, right? Now, I'm, uh, now I'm trying to get this uh, revelation out. It was the ladies' room tagged up? No. And I didn't write Charmin when I was 11 years old. What, what, what were you writing? I wrote my government name. Oh! Okay. <laughs> okay. But... I wasn't the only one with that name. I see. Like so, I so, see. So you got away with it. Did Did you ever get caught? Um, someone told on me. Oh, snitches! Because the other persons with my name were being questioned about it. I was like, <laughs> "That's not me. I didn't do it." 
And what, what did they do with you? Did the priest or nuns uh, um, come down hard on you? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, they, they came down pretty hard. My parents were hard. Real, my dad was, he was P.O.'d. Yeah. He yeah. was really P.O.'d. So, do you have brothers and sisters? Yes, I do. I'm the baby. You're the baby? Yes. Tell us about them. Well, my brother Howard, really nice guy. They were all much older than me. Oh. They were all much older than me, and um, they didn't like when my dad hit me. My father, he, he'd hit me. Mm. He'd, he'd, he'd pop me. I mean, he wasn't abusive, yeah. but in that time, his time, he was brought up with spankings. You got your behind spank. And that used to drive them crazy. They would literally, they wouldn't speak to him. My mom wouldn't speak to him. And they just didn't like it when he hit me. Not to say I didn't deserve it, you know. Sometimes I did things that I shouldn't have done. And I needed to be spanked. I hang out to 2 o'clock in the morning. I hang out to 2 o'clock in the morning. My father's like, what are you doing out there? You're a girl. <laughs> Two now, o'clock in the morning, what are you doing out there? Okay, so let me ask you this thing, right? Um, South Bronx, Fort Apache, one of the most uh, notorious ghettos in the city in the um, early 70s, right? Um, did you have any fears of, of dope fiends or street gangs? Never. Why not? Because I just wasn't. I just wasn't afraid. Did you have a lot of fights? I had a few fights. I fought Lionel 168. Okay. Right. okay. I wasn't stupid in that fight now. Okay. Um, so fighting, right? Um, uh, um, was, were, were you fighting because you felt bullied by somebody? Um, no, actually I was teasing. I, you know, back in the days we had this thing we called snap. Mm -hmm. right. We snap on you. So I snapped on Lionel like you wouldn't believe it because he was trying to snap Before on me. Lionel, on your street, in your neighborhood, in your school, were you well liked to the point where you didn't have any fights or did you have fights? I had a fight here and a fight there. Never, you know, a lot of fights. And was the fight because he was being bullied? No. Why, why don't you um, say some more about it? about Lionel and snapping on him. And oh, man, I snapped on him so hard. He slapped the taste out of my mouth. He really did. And he was as, almost as big as he is now when we were like 14, 15 yeah. years old. And I just just socked him. I just hit, I, I hit him right here in the stomach, in the solar plex. Yeah. And he was going down. He was couldn't believe it. And I just caught him with a good lift. <laughs> wow. And I took off running. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, okay, so um we had, we, we had we had um uh, uh, a young lady on uh, our block, Darlene, right? Uh she was good at fighting too, right? Um uh, okay. So in the in this early seventies, right? Um Women didn't have a lot of rights as far as, um, or they weren't recognized in their rights um, as they uh, are now. Did you, were you aware of that? That I, because as a black woman, I, uh, um, uh, a black person and a black woman, did you feel like double, uh, 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 discrimination or prejudice? Within the guys, no. Um, the guys used to be pissed because I could beat them in scalzies, beat up a couple of the guys. But um, no, even even in in writing, when we were out writing, I, the guys never made me feel any way. They never tried to like hit on me. They just treated me like I was one of the guys. You know, I climbed the fences, I jumped over the tracks, I went under the trains, I ran in the trains. I, you know, they never made me feel any way. They didn't make me feel like I, I didn't belong. I was just one of the guys. Okay. So, uh, like in the in the seventies, the feminist movement came up, and I um, I would say as 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 a male growing up in the South Rob Bronx, Burnings. right? 
growing up in the South Bronx, I would say that in a lot of ways, uh, the guys on the street would like not give the same uh, uh, um, uh, recognition to, to to females because we thought like, oh, you female. You do get nobody. I've home. never experienced yeah, okay, that. I'm just going to okay, tell you, I've never experienced okay. that. Okay. You know, I'm just saying, you're female, right? And you can't come over here and be doing the deal with these guys over here and so forth and, you know, hanging, doing whatever, whatever, right? Um, but not that, you know, we didn't mean any harm. Well, but, you know, um, so like male chauvinist type of. Never experienced that. The only thing I experienced was. They were pissed. They put no girls on the on the scale on the Skelsey game, because and especially me, because you were winning. Because I was winning. <laughs> Far as uh, uh, that that chauvinistic attitude, never. Okay. I never experienced that. Okay. Now, Guys always treated me. Okay. So were you aware of limit issues in the seventies? I was aware, but I mean, what did I care about that? I, you know, I was a kid. Yeah. I wasn't, you know. Okay. Now, just for the sake of... Burning um, bras. I remember when we heard about, oh, the women's are burning bras, burning their bras. I said, who in the hell would burn a good damn bra? <laughs> why would you want to burn your good bra? And my mother said the same thing. She said, yeah, why would they want to burn a good bra? What the heck is wrong with those women? Burning good bras. But I got it. My mother got it. But we just still didn't understand the thing of burning a good bra. Sure. Now, just for the sake of um, historical uh, uh, timeline and all, what years were you at St. Athanasius and were you writing your name on the bathroom wall and all? Oh, gosh, I can't remember the exact years. I, I've never been really good in remembering yeah. years. So like Only... 11, 12. Oh, gosh. I was born in 19... <clears throat> But um, <laughs> you got that? so but we'll, we we won't we won't assign these out. But it was it was before it was like before 1970, at least uh, maybe a, a couple a, a couple years or something, right? Or, yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but I can tell you when I actually did that when I I wrote on that billboard in Simpson Street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember it was. 69. I see. And it was after Christmas. I That's see. why I can remember going up there. And then I said, I said, Ray, I'm a, he said, why you didn't put my name up there? I said, barely see my name. Yeah. And, and so he said, well, you know, let us go get some spray paint. Let's get some paint. And we went, there was a store called Kresge's. Hmm. And where was that located? Right on Southern Boulevard. Okay, and it was like a hardware store. Uh, no, it was store? like a, a Woolworths type. Oh, store. Woolworths. Okay, yeah. okay. Because right. I can, yeah, five and nine, five and ten. That's what we used to call it, the five and ten. And we went in there and we got a couple of cans and we got up there. That's interesting because um, when I realized, because on my on our street we had our own little like you know clique of, of graffiti writers. Um, writers. We were not called graffiti writers. We were called writers. <laughs> yeah. Get it straight. Yeah. Right, no right. graffiti. Right, right, right. It was the mayor that started calling it graffiti. Right, exactly. Uh -huh. um, but, um, yeah, so we had this little clique of, 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 of writers, right? And um, um, we became aware uh, of you and your little posse down, on, down there on uh, near Simpson Street. And they said, um, along with, um, they thought I was a guy. They didn't well, know yeah, well, guy. okay, yeah, well, I was, uh, I was, I would say that when I saw you, right, I was a little taken back, right? I'm not serious. I was a little taken back. I said, this is a girl, all right? All right? Mm -hmm. all right? And I said, because uh, there wasn't a lot of girls writing, right? So, uh, but, you guys had a dynamic crew. Um, Apple Four, Apple Four, Henry Nixon, uh, um, Cloud, um, Cloud One Thirty Five, One Thirty Five, Cloud One Thirty Five. Yeah, you even on Cloud One Thirty Five. No, One Thirty Five, One Thirty Five. That's Mike Santos. Right. Uh, wow. One Thirty Five. One Thirty Five. We never looked at them. He had a Spanish name. 
You're right. That I'm was it. Because yeah, yeah. Miss right, Nancy, so, so. his mother, Miss Nancy, was a black woman. Right, so. Miss Nancy didn't speak no Spanish. None right. of them spoke any Spanish. All right, so I started, you know, comparing in contrast. Oh, they got a, you know, you know, because we had King Cool 156 in our crew, mm -hmm. right? And he was uh, Puerto Rican, right? Um, and so I'm, I, I look at you. I, I was like, kind of like taken back, and I said, they're rolling with, with, with a chick. Right, um, but uh, yo was pretty dynamic because Ray B nine fifty four. He seemed to have been yeah. like the like the 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 head head dude. Like was like was was like like you know directing stuff. Now the first thing that happened when I we got together, we just got together on like a, a writing. I'll never forget it. This writing mission. Yo brought us to a racking spot immediately. Uh, it might have been that store you was referring to because it was right, uh, right near. Um, it was right on. It was station. right on. It was right on Simpson Street. It was. Yeah. It was actually closer to the Simpson Street train station as opposed to uh, Hunts Point. Hunts Point. Okay. It was. Yeah. What's you know those stations are not too far from each other. Yeah, they're not too yeah. far, but they're, they're, it's a good walk. All right. So um um racking spot right now um. Um, the opponents in there, and um, it was like one of the, my first um, uh, Bogart experience. You know, Bogart. So now racking, now to me, was like uh, going in like Alexandra Hines or one of these uh, Martin's paint. And, and stealing. sneaking around. And stealing. And, and, and getting a can of paint and putting it in our... In our and our, and our jacket you or took something. took one can? A couple of cans. Oh, you know, we were a big enough jacket. But Bogart was something different. You just go in and take it. Right. Just mm -hmm. It's just be a you bunch of us. Right. Right. Explain, so that we Bogart, yeah, explain that Bogart. Explain that Bogart situation. We would, it would just be a group of kids, you know, 20 kids, and you just run in the store and you just, Bogart, just take it. Take it. Man is looking at you like, hey, you don't know. It's so many of us, he don't know you which one to it. knock the stew out of so we would just bogart yeah. it come from the word humpy hum, what was That's, it humphrey bogart, humphrey bogart. so wow. we just bogart wow. bogart our stuff rush the store rush the store and take all the paint you can take wow that 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 experience is that that that's something that it, uh, uh stays in my memory uh concerning me because i was like really taken back when i seen you was doing that because <laughs> first of all i seen you i said i said they got a chick running with them, right? Because <laughs> right? we had we had girls on our block that wrote uh, 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 Sugar T one sixty three, don't mm -hmm. you know, right? But she didn't roll with us, right? I I think we were a little like embarrassed to be running with a chick, but okay. Now I'm just saying this. I'm just saying that this is the seventies, right? And uh, but your your guys didn't didn't, didn't mind. I maybe I think maybe had you. In, in his corner, like you know, you yeah, know. <laughs> baby, whip whip Lionel one sixty eight. Um, we were all together. It was it was us. Interesting. And um, I can remember. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you a little little tidbit about sending Lionel and Ray B because Ray B had this big giant afro. He always looked crazy. He was a big guy, but he was like twelve. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe was humongous. He was big and tall. He wasn't fat, but he was, you know, he was husky. Yeah. And then Lionel, with his big behind, he's going there, big black kid, going into to Martin's paint. They see them two big jokers. They say, oh, man, he's too black. He's going to do some shit. <laughs> so they would go in. So me, of course, I would come in. I have my little mini skirt on. Come in with a nice big coat. And while everybody's watching them, I'd be taking boxes of Uniwise, boxes of Pilots, boxes of uh, whatever I could get. And while the guys are busy, while the, the, the people are busy following them, I would ease right out the store. <laughs> we meet up the block, we split it. Okay, so um, where did you learn that from? That was the hustler in me. The hustler in That's yeah, the hustler in I, I want to get some background on as you get into this, because I know we're going to be fatigued. 
how did you get into writing? Now, I, I know you became a member of UGA, but I want to know the basics that one of your classmates uh, was no. writing, writing, and you came up with your book, come up with okay, your and it was just scribbling on the wall. I was actually just scribbling in the bathroom. And then I saw some writing on the subway. I was like, damn, I'm going to try that. Okay. Do you remember and any I, of the first tags that you saw? I don't remember the names. Yeah, yeah, I just yeah. saw it on the subway. It. I saw it inside the cars. So, of course, I went and got a magic marker. Ray, we all, Ray, Lionel, a, 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 um, Henry, Apple. Cloud, he, he, Cloud was a toy. <laughs> what line, what line Wait, was that you was on? What line uh, of subway? I was on the two, the five, the six, sometimes we'd hit the, you know, the alphabet letters, the yeah. alphabet trains, we would hit them sometimes, but mainly, <coughs> mainly it was the six train and the two and the fives. And just before we get more into writing all, a couple more um, uh, non-writing related questions before we really hit the stride with writing, um, why don't you talk some about the food in your household growing up? Oh man, we had the best food. We ate, we ate we ate well. We ate well. I mean, of course, my mother was an excellent cook. My father could cook, okay. but mainly my mother would do all the cooking. Um, we had fresh. We always ate fresh bread. My mother would make bread. Every now and then, she would buy a, a loaf of Wonder Bread, but basically, we ate fresh bread. We ate, she made uh, biscuits, yeah. being from the South. She could make what they call regular biscuits, biscuits that you could put uh, butter and jelly on, or sopping biscuits. Mm -hmm. You could have gravy and you could sop the gravy up and that biscuit would get that gravy and hold it. So um, yeah, we ate well, we ate steaks. My dad, my dad being a hustler, he had some guy that he would give him Five to ten dollars for fifty pounds of meat. Wow. What all kind of meat would that be? Oh man, it was lamb, steaks, oh. uh, ground beef, the big old uh, what was that? The big old uh, bologna. Yeah. The oh, big yeah, thing, yeah, the yeah, big, yeah. The big pork yeah. chops. Yep. Yeah, chitlins. Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean we ate good. Yep. We weren't, you know, we we didn't have we. I never missed a meal. I never, ever missed a meal. My mother used to have to make me eat. Yeah. I, to be hungry, to know what it's like to be hungry, never had it. Never had it. And were there places around the neighborhood that you all would ever go to pick up food or restaurants, anything like well, that? The restaurant my family liked was Katz's Deli. Oh, okay, okay, sure. Katz's Deli. Sure. And um, we would go there. I remember the counter, the counter minute. This, uh, this is when they were all Jews. Yeah, yeah. They weren't. Now you got Spanish, whatever, there. But it was all Jews, and um, my dad would give me a check. He would say, "Go down to Cats and get this, that, and the other, and whatever it is, just fill in the amount." I can remember the counter minute. It used to be a counter minute. He would say, "Do you have any dogs?" And I would say. Well, why do you want to know? He says, I have leftover meat yeah. that I can give you. He said, just give me a dollar. He'd give me a bag this big full of scraps. Wow. But a pastrami. And I mean, it wasn't like it was dirty meat, like yeah, they threw yeah. it on a the floor. Like the they just, right? yeah. So I came home with that big bag of meat. And my father said, what the hell did you buy? I said, I have all this stuff. I said, but the counter guy told me he had this for a dollar. Yeah. Sounds like a good he said, deal. He said, he said, do you have a dog? And and remember what I did to you? My father did it to me. My father said, woo, 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 woo. So we had so much meat. Wow. We had, um, it got to the point where I was, I would look for that counterman. I would go down and look for him. Daddy said, make sure you find him. And I would look for that guy. And then I said, well, do you got any corned beef brisket? He said, oh, I have bags of that. And I mean, this man, the bags were so big. 
I would literally have to, you know, tell my dad, hey, you got to send, you know, PJ with me because he can carry it. This meat is heavy. <laughs> and he would send my brother Paul with me. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And you already mentioned a while ago, um, you know, when, when some of the gangs came to the neighborhood and we're trying to get people to force people to join. What what gangs do you remember in your neighborhood? Um, The Savage... What was it? Well, I remember it was the Savage Nomads. Savage Nomads. We were cool with the Savage Nomads, but I think it was the Savage Skulls that was trying to make us join. Uh -huh. And um, I'll never forget Doris Bias. They said, well, you're going to have to fight one of our girls. And Doris said, I'll take you, you, and you. She said, all together, come on. Wow. How'd that fight go? She wore their asses out. <laughs> Doris Bias, I will never forget her. Wow. And she was she was she was younger than us. I came Dara's sister and I came up together. Yeah. But Dara, she was like, mm mm. Well, we used to call her Dorsey. <laughs> wow. The black spades. The black spades. I can I'm gonna tell you a funny story about that. We we had have we had a friend, Deborah Garvey. God rest your soul, Deborah. She was tough as nails. You hear me? She was one tough chick. And the guys didn't like her. And they couldn't beat her up one by one. So they jumped on her. They all jumped on her. They beat the stuffings out of her. And she when she got up. She said, I'm going to get you, you, you. I'm going to catch you by yourself. And uh, one of the guys, Claude, I'll never forget his name. He said, he went and got some girl from the Black Spades. Her name was Dana. And I knew her. And he she came to, to the block to fight Deborah. And I told her, I said, Dana. He can't beat her. I said, she's going to beat your ass. I said, he can't beat her. Why won't he fight her? Because she wants to fight him. I said, Dana, don't do it. And Dana told her, you got to fight your own battles. Told him, Claude. Because wow. he couldn't beat her. I know Dana was tough. Dana was a tough girl. She was a black space. She was really a tough chick. But I know Deborah would have ate her, ate her up. Wow. Do you remember the Ghetto Brothers? Yes, I remember the Ghetto Brothers. Yeah. Peacemakers. The, the Peacemakers. Turbans. The Turbans. I remember the Javelins. The, the, the Javelins. The, the Seven Immortals. The Seven Immortals. Yeah, yeah, I remember the, the Seven, Seven Immortals. Yeah. yeah. yeah I was so. good friends with ben, um, Black Ben. Okay. Black Benji. Oh, you were? Okay. Yeah, okay. he was. He always encouraged me to stay in school. You yeah, know, he, he always did that. He was a cool guy to me. Yeah. Yeah, he. he, he he, did, he said, if you ever need me, you just let me know. And I was like, I got brothers. So, <laughs> so in, in a general neighborhood of, 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 of um, uh, Port Apache, the 41st Precinct, right? Um, the Ghetto Brothers headquarters was right near me, near on 62nd Street up on the hill, right? And they had a, a Latin rock band. You ever seen them play yes. the street? Okay. Yes, they play. They played all it all all over, yeah. pretty much. Yeah, but mainly in the neighborhood, and people right. would come to see them right. instead of them traveling. Right, exactly. Okay, that's interesting. That's great. And as far as the schools you went to, uh, were there art programs either at your your elementary school, the the grade school, or um, Saint no, Athanasius? No, actually, in um, 75, public school 75, yeah. they had a little science program, uh, and I remember I was in kindergarten, and that was when I first, that was where I first won my first science award. So you were into science from, uh, from a very early yeah, age. Yeah, it huh? was something that I liked, because my dad, like I had different parents, my, like some of the kids, they didn't, they only had one mother. Yeah. They only had one parent, which was their mother. Me, I was blessed enough to have my mom and my dad. Yeah. And my dad was educated. My mom was a smart lady. She was a smart cookie. And um, we would watch uh, Wild Kingdom. You know, when everybody else was watching something else, you know, the Flintstones or whatever, we were watching Marlon Perkins, Wild Kingdom. Yeah. We would watch, um, we would watch 60 Minutes. Yeah. Face the Nation. We would watch those kind of programs. My 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 dad, you know, he would make us sit there. He would watch this, learn something. You can watch Fred Flintstone on Saturday. <laughs> he was he was very adamant about learning, opening up your mind and 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 
seeing other things. Yeah. So. Riding on the train. Um, did you think of uh, <coughs> I style? Like no, how, how, were, how you wanted them see, to look? In the in when we were riding, there was no such thing as style. It was just getting up, okay. getting your name up there, and getting up. That's what it was. Um, the styles didn't come until later. You know, like Lonnie, he, he you know, oh, he you. had a style. Yeah, he had a, <clears throat> he, he used to sit down and he would, I, I used to be able to do his, just his regular, I, could, I don't know if I can still do it, but I remember I could do his, his lettering. But this is before he had the bubbling and all uh -huh. of this and all of that. Just the regular hit, I could do that. And um, we all pretty much learned how to do each other's. We we liked it. it wasn't that we were copying, it was that we liked someone's style. Yeah, sure. And I learned how to do the stay high. Oh, wow. oh the, yeah. the figure, right? Yeah. That's cool. Wow. Yeah. I learned how to do it because I liked it. It wasn't that I was trying to steal it or, or anything like that. It was just that I liked it. Like Raby, he wrote Raby 954 R A Y. Then the Y came down. And then he had the the arrow point and then 954. I remember, um, who else? Damn, I can't think of that name. <coughs> Lee 163. Lee 163. I remember Lee. His way he wrote Lee his name. Wow, that was interesting. And then Ray decided to become me 163. 163. Mm. Or as we would call it, 163D. We <laughs> never called it 163. And uh -huh. he would do the M, and then he put the E, like pretty much how Lee did the L, and then he did the E, like that. And Ray did the M, E, <clears throat> one, six, three, D. So it's nice interesting with the three D, right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, this other fella used to do that, that I kind of admired a lot, uh, by the name of uh, 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 Wendell. Oh, Wendell. <laughs> You know Wendell, right? It was never pronounced Wendell. It was Wendell. Ooh, that's what you say. No, <laughs> I'm telling you. That's what I know. <laughs> yes. If no one pronounced it oh, Wendell. Super. It was Wendell. Right. Wendell. So, um, that was super cool. Yes, Wendell, was. Wendell Williams. Okay, so Wendell Williams. So, uh, or as Lionel used to call him, Wendell. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's, uh, this guy here, uh, Wendell. Uh, when did you meet him? Oh God, I was still like, we were all still kids okay. when we met. So, um, and his tag was? Super cool, 223. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Where did you meet him? Where did I meet Wendell? I think Ray B linked us up. We met through Ray B. Okay. Ray. Interesting. So. So tell us a little bit about Super Cool Phase 2, Stay High. Obviously, at that time, they, they're not celebrities, right? You guys are just... In the no, crowd. they were just guys who got up. Yeah, we respected them because okay. they got up. It wasn't like... nobody, No one was a celebrity. But it was just guys you recognize who got up. Yeah. Oh, you saw them. Oh, you, you saw, saw them. their names. You saw their names. You saw them. They were always on... I remember... Um, Super Cool didn't have like a fancy style, but he got up everywhere. Mm. Every time you look, you saw Super Cool 223 on the subway. God, it's cool. And he had a sloppy handwriting. He was the king. Yeah, the, you know, it, there was no kings or queens back then. He just got up. And that was what we said. Oh, man, that, that son of a banjo picker, he gets up. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So, face two got up. Well, Lonnie yeah. got up. Lonnie well, got up. Lon but Lonnie got up too. Yeah. He got up. When it got into the style thing, I was pretty much starting to leave that, leave writing because I became interested in boys. Uh huh. And that was say hi. He lived in your neighborhood. No, Wayne didn't live in my neighborhood. Chick I used to call him Chicken Wayne because his <laughs> name was Wayne, and I would call him Chicken Wayne. And he would always laugh. And I asked him one day, I said, I said, Wayne, why? I, said, I said, why do you write stay high? He said, because all I do is stay high. <laughs> <laughs> now, so the, the now Charmin. The numbers correlated to 
the area where the tackle was thrown. So stay high was like 149. But the, his 149 was all over. Yeah. It wasn't just, you know, at one spot on 149th Street. Yeah. It was all over. Yeah, I'm saying the, the out, number correlated the to number where you live. Exactly, yeah, where you live. Like, yeah. I lived on 165th Street, but when I was writing, I said, damn, this one is too much. So I dropped the one and just kept the 65. Uh, okay. But I lived, I initially started Charmin 165. That's what I wrote. Yeah. And do you remember um, when you first used an actual spray paint can and, and stopped using a, a marker? Or Well, we never stopped using markers because use we used marker. markers on the inside of the cars. Uh -huh. You didn't, you know, the people, you know, you couldn't spray paint because yeah. it would dry, it would kill people, you know. <laughs> they would run us off the damn train. But um, we did markers on the inside and we did spray paint on the outside. Yeah, yeah. And... Uh, were you still at St. Athanasius when you first picked up a spray paint can? Hmm. That might be hard to remember. It's possible. Yeah. It's possible. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I probably was still there. Do you remember what what brand what brand or brands were you going to the most of that time? Okay, I know there's a few initially, stands, we didn't have any brand. It, yeah. The brand was the brand you could steal. <laughs> The one you could rack, that's what you got. But that's then, got. as we got into it more, we started using like Red Devil, uh -huh. and we started noticing the different way, the different sprays of the can. Like when you would use the neon, neon was very watery, yeah. and it would run a lot. Um, some sprays, like when we started doing pieces, yeah. when we got into that, because my piece. How I did my piece, like how these guys do it, they outline it and then they fill it in. When I did my piece, I had taken a, what was that, a Jiffone? Uh-huh. Yeah, it was, a, it was a Jiffone cap. And we used it as a fat cap and we sprayed. And then I just went, oh, we just kept going around and making uh -huh. it larger. Then you would go around with the, the outline uh, uh, paint. But yeah, we didn't have any style back then. Sure. And when it came to style, you know, like I said, when it started getting with really, you know, with styles, I was sort of like, um, I was still in it. But after a certain amount of time, I just got out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you were so early. Yeah. By the time you were old enough, you know, as, as yeah. far as being interested in boys and all, you didn't want to mess around with yeah when i was spray painting with the guys i never looked at him like oh i like him yeah it was like he was just one of the guys who just one of the cats i go riding with yeah 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 so i found some old trains with your name on it are you can you talk about them um well i can just start off with like, this one can you this, this one has some of your friends on it oh that one so it, it was just cool Cool. If you notice it, if you notice, if you notice what it says, it says "Super Cool and Charmin 65." You see the end and oh, Charmin yeah, yeah, 65, and that's what yeah. Obviously, your guys didn't tag you at the same time, so or did they tag you at the same time? It's a lot of well, I can remember Apple Four. I can remember Lee. Um, I can remember. No, I don't remember Lee, but I remember Wendell Wright and Super Cool, two two three, and Sharon sixty five. Wow. <laughs> and would you mostly you tag, tag in your neighborhood? Mm -hmm. I, would you mostly tag in your neighborhood? Um, I know, obviously, when you're riding the trains, you tag wherever they go. But yeah. um, would you travel to other neighborhoods to get your tag up? Ever? Yeah, we would yeah. go in the tunnels. Oh, we would, sometimes okay. we would go up on layup tracks. Uh -huh. um, yeah, we would go anywhere. Uh, we would go into, what's that? Those, uh, oh gosh, here I am. Um, we would go into the yards, the okay. train yards. Yeah. What are some of the yards that you remember going into? Um, what was that one in Brooklyn? By, What's the name of that, that yard? Ever do you remember the yard? The yard the in New Brooklyn? Lots New Lots. Yard. New Lots. Yeah. Okay. You yeah, go we down would go the there. Um, I can remember being in one of the tunnels in Brooklyn, and uh, excuse you me. Utica. And uh, there was a layup at Utica Tunnel. We were there. It was Lionel, 
Ray B and myself, and we were in the tunnels just tagging trains on the outside. And it was three guys that came in to rob us. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, these motherfuckers is crazy. They wanted your pain. Because I got, yeah. How about that one? Yeah, I remember this one. What kind of train is that? Really that was dark. a red bird. It was considered a red bird. This was back on, that was the number six train, I believe. Yeah. It was a six, I think. That's a big time. But, um, yeah, they came in to rob us. They said, you know what this is? <laughs> and what y'all do? I socked the little one. I just set it off. I socked him, and then Lionel and Ray B just grabbed the other two and just beat beat their asses. And yeah. then Ray B and Lionel had them together, and he told me, and, and Whip Wop's like, Check their pockets. See what they got. <laughs> so we robbed them. <laughs> would, would y'all go to layups uh, like in the North Bronx ever? Any of those layups? Yeah. yeah. We would go there. The two, the, the, we would sometimes the go up. What was that stop? Was it Pelham? Sometimes they just had them laying up. And we would just jump on the tracks and just start oh, wow. hitting them. Just start hitting the trains. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Bernard Garner. Esplanade. No, you know, we never did the number threes. We no. didn't do the threes. We didn't, we didn't, I don't know why. We didn't care. We didn't go into to the, to that lot, but we would catch number threes. We would see them. They have them laid up and we would hit them. But we wouldn't go so much into, to, I can, the that's. three yard. Yeah, the three yard. That was like 140. 148th Street. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think we did go in there mm -hmm. one time, but it, it just, I don't know, for whatever reason, it, we didn't, it wasn't that well, we didn't like general, it or what. Yeah, it general, was just that we just didn't. You could see your tag running on the line in, on the twos and the fives from your neighborhood. Of course. Right? And, and the sixes. And, and, and the, the sixes. sixes. Right? But if you, if you, uh, if you tagged the, the three train, you would ne really never see it unless you went over there. Yeah. You could, and you could see it when it's, when the, the three train is running. You could see it. You could be in a station, a, a number three station. You would see it. Yeah, but you would have to go in the three, three line jurisdiction area. Well, the three and the two run on the same lines. Remember? Underground. The, the, uh, yeah. Underground. So you could see them. Yeah. Okay. So let me ask you something. Um, did you know Eva and Barbara? Yeah. But why does everybody forget Barbara, Eva, and Michelle? They only say Eva and Barbara. But there were three of them, yeah. Bar the 62 girls, yeah, Barbara, Eva, and Michelle. I met them. I remember Ray B used to tease the hell out of mm -hmm. What was it, Barbara? He's, yeah, he was, he was terrible. You know, he was the snap master. He could snap <laughs> her. He, he snapped her. He used to rip her a new behind every time. But, you know, we weren't, like, close or anything. Mm -hmm. But I, I saw them. We never went hitting, but. I don't know if Rod, uh, Lionel, Lionel was kind of close with them. I think he was close with him and uh, him and Barbara and Eva and Michelle. Okay, so um, Eva and Barbara, they were more like Manhattan, right? They, I think they all were Manhattan girls, right? Mm -hmm. But right. I, you can't, you can't leave Michelle out. You just, I'm, you yeah. can't do that. Yeah. You gotta say Barbara, Eva, and Michelle, because they were the three together. Mm -hmm. Like Barbara and Eva started out first, but Michelle came, and every time you would see Barbara, Eva, together. Michelle, Barbara, yeah. Eva, Michelle, you saw the sixty-two girls. Yeah. So, um, how'd you meet them? Through Raby, Raby and Whipwap. Lionel 168. I'm sorry, I keep calling him Whip Wop, but that's what I call <laughs> That's what you do. That's what, that's what I call That was my nickname for him. Yeah. Don't ask me why. <laughs> what other female writers did you see of your time? S. Pat, 169. S. Pat, 169. Yep. Was she from 169th Street? Um, I don't know. I really never knew where Pat lived. Yeah. yeah. She lived in West Bronx. I mean, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. But we would hang out all the time, but she would always meet me in my in my neighborhood. Charles Spades too's girl. Yeah, she yep, she had two kids from Lonnie. Mm -hmm. I think two or two or three kids. I remember when she was pregnant, we was still like sneaking in movies, doing silly stuff, hanging out, breaking night. So S Pat and who else? Um as far as Lady Rays? Barbara Eva and Michelle. S Pat. Um, tonic H2O. 
Sylvia. Big Bird? Big Bird? Um, Big Bird, Big Bird, Big Bird, Big Bird. Did, Don, did Lionel date her? I know he did it. No, uh, um, okay, so uh, there was some, um, so Espat is African American. Eva and Barbara uh, and Michelle are Hispanic, right? Yeah, they. I think they're Cuban. Okay. I think they were Cuban. Mm -hmm. uh, did you ever meet any uh, uh, Caucasian female writers? No. You look like you have a bunch of questions you want to ask. Oh, me. I do. Okay, I do. Come on. Come on. Um, okay, so, so why don't you talk some more about uh, places where you'd rack? You started out in your neighborhood. Where where did you end up going? What what all places would you go Martin's to? Martin's Paint. Okay. Remember everybody Martin's remembers paint. Palmer. Of course, Pearl Paint. Um, where was Pearl Paint? That was down. Where was that? Like in Canal Street Canal in that Street. area. Okay. Yeah, Pearl Paint. Um, there was another store. I can't think of the name of it. We used to, yeah, we used to hit the drugstore, Genevieve's. Yeah. Genevieve's but we used to go in yeah. Queens to get Genevieve's. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, and yeah. And, um, Gen and, Genevieve. and um, Long Island City, Queens, you had yeah. Colony Paints. Okay, well, yeah. we didn't do Colony. We did Genevieve's. And... What about Pergamon? Pergamon. No, we didn't do Pergamon. Not that I can remember. Well, who, who's, well, any place that had paint, you would go. pretty much we would go yeah. to. No one yeah. looked at the name and said. used to have paint, too. Yes. Yeah. And McCrory. And McCrory's. Do you, do you uh, remember any of the most creative kind of racking you did? Or you, or you just kept yeah. it simple? Oh, okay. Oh, you yeah, have I was very creative. Okay, let's hear um, some of that. I can remember all of us going into the store and um, I would put, put them under my sleeve. Put a couple of cans under my sleeve. I would put cans down in, back then we wore what they called tube socks, remember? Oh, yeah. tube socks, yeah. Stick some down in your tube, stick a can in your tube, stick one on that one. Yes. Then, you know, you stick them in your crotch, put them around your waist. And um, I remember one store in particular where I wasn't able to get any in my waist or in my pants legs. Yeah. And, but I was able to get them in my, under my, in, under the sleeves. And we all got caught. And the guy we was like, no, we don't have anything. And so the guy was a real, he was a smart aleck, but he was good. He said, jump up and down. And the guys would jump up and down. You click, 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 click. <laughs> so he told me, jump up and down. But I held my arms out and I jumped up and down. He says, get out, get the hell out of my store. I was fortunate that day I only put them in my sleeves and I knew if I jumped up and down, that they, you wouldn't hear that click, click, yeah. click sound. But if I had stand, stood straight, and they uh -huh. probably would have fallen out. Yeah, for sure. So, and that's how I got away the, that day with them a couple of cans of paint. <laughs> did Did you have, uh, aside from that, any other close calls while racking? Oh, yeah, man. But that was when I figured out how to send Ray and Lionel in there. Because I knew that, you know, they were so big. And then Ray with this big, gigantic afro, we just, they stuck out like sore thumbs. Uh -huh. Lionel's a big guy. And they stuck out like sore thumbs. And so when they would go in, of course, I would go in. I remember one time I had this big, uh, it was an art bag, like a portfolio. That was it, what they called yeah, them? Portfolio, portfolio bag, case. Yeah. yeah. And I would go in there and I would just, I wouldn't take one or two. I would take a box. Uh -huh. Anything, I, it got to where I couldn't zip it up, yeah. so I would just hold it and just walk out. <laughs> yeah. Are are there particular colors, either markers or, or spray paint that you were drawn to? Well, I liked, when I got introduced to the opaque markers, the white opaque markers, you guys remember that? Mm -hmm. Edward, you remember that? Paper markers, you know, um, yeah. Um, I liked the way they looked, and you could color them. Yeah. But the downside was they look pretty when you put them on the glass, but that's the easiest thing to wash off is uh -huh. the glass. So I got out of that. And then what would we do? We use Absorbing Junior. We would empty out the Absorbing Junior mm -hmm. container, and it was like, uh, yeah, it, it had like a cushion top, mm -hmm. and you could write with that. You fill it up with some paint, and you just or write ink. with that or ink. Yeah. Um, what else? 
the uniwides because they wrote wide. Uh -huh. Then the mini wides, they wrote a little wider. And of course, the king of all, the pilots. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we, yeah, I used to always steal boxes. In the beginning, initially, I would just take one or two markers. Yeah, yeah. But when we got to write so much, we started writing so much, then it was like, okay, the box is sitting on the counter. I'll just take the whole damn box. Uh -huh. So, um, cause talking about writing now, in the subway, right? Um, um, how did you get in the subway? Snuck on the subway. Nobody paid. Like snuck, like can you sneak, like across. Do you remember the paddle? Yes, I remember that. I was so skinny I could go right through it. Okay. I was so skinny I could just pull it a certain way and slide right through it. Or through the gate. Right through it. Okay. Or either over the gate. Right. And so, remember the, the, the token book. Pay a fair, pay a fair. And and what about the layups? Did 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 someone from your uh, your crew ha manage to get a skeleton key or make a skeleton? Oh yeah, key? we all got skeleton keys. I don't know how Where'd I got mine, but I I had one. Okay. Yeah. And I remember. We were on the insides of a layup track, yeah. and we were in the trains, and we heard the cops. Mm -hmm. So you just took this key, stuck it in, went into the, the conductor's booth, and you just sat there. <laughs> okay, so let me ask you about them with the subway, right? Um, the 30th Avenue L, you remember that line yet? Of course. All right, so that's um, now that, that line is defunct. It's no longer, um, you remember when they took it down? Yes. Okay. Um, Let's talk about when it was up. Yeah, right. That's so, that's what I want to talk okay, about because yeah. remember the the yeah. the conductor was not inside a booth. Yeah, he was actually between two cars. Right. Uh -huh. yeah, right. Uh -huh. That's how you open the doors. Yeah. yeah. That's how you open really? the doors. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. He was so, not in a booth. He right. was this okay, this right. is a car. This is a car, and he was standing on the outside huh. of the two cars. Right. So um. On the Third Avenue L, what was the closest station near you, or the station that you were familiar we with? We were hit it on 149th Street, Third Avenue. 149th Street. 149th Street and Third Avenue L. You yeah. get on there and do your thing. And the last stop on the L was Gun Hill Road. Gun Hill Road. Yeah. Oh, it went all the way up the in the Bronx. Bronx. Yeah, in the Bronx, of course. Yeah, in the Bronx. Who you know of another Gun Hill Road in Manhattan? Uh, well, okay, so that's the last stop in the yeah, Bronx, so but the only towards um, Manhattan what would be the last stop. 149th Street and 3rd Avenue, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that was yeah. the last yeah. stop. Yeah, it just right. went between yeah. Yeah. there at that point, right? Okay. So since the conductor was between the cars, would that make things uh, no. challenging at all? No, not at all, because he was on the outside and we'd be destroying the inside. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting about the conductor between the two cars. Yeah. What else do you remember about the third album? Well, that's a little different. It was loud. loud. And I remember I used to like the seats. Remember it looked if they yeah. were yellow. Rat. They call it a rat like they like Sean. Did you ever suck up tokens? Hell no. No? We used to that's how we used to get our money, man. Mm -hmm. Sucking up tokens? Yeah. Yeah. No, I wasn't doing that. We used to make money over that. I was that. busy in the store stealing and selling my stuff. You know. <laughs> or, right. or calling my friends to go in to steal. I said, okay, we're going to go in these stores. We would go in Macy's. We'd hit Gimbal's. No, we'd go into Macy's, EJ Corvettes, whatever. And I would always, I was terrible. I was a hustler. I'd say, okay, we're going into Gimbal's, the last store. I shouldn't be telling this, but y'all don't hate me for that. My friends. I would watch them go up on the escalator going into Gimbal's. And I would take all the bags and turn around and grab a cab and go uptown and sell all the stuff. <laughs> and tell them, they said, well, what happened? I said, I got busted. They took everything. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible little girl. <laughs> Terrible little girl. Terrible. On the third avenue L, right? Um, do you remember uh, the... Um, some of the advertisements that were in the Third Avenue L? 
No, I didn't really pay. I just remember the, the seats always look like little corn, little pieces of corn, mm. like corn on the cob. Yeah, yeah, That's like, what they always yeah. reminded me of. Rat, they call that rat. It's like a, 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 a rattan. Weave, yeah. Like, yeah, it was like, rattan. Uh, I think rattan. it was rattan, but yeah, I, it always to me it always looked like little corn on the cob. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you remember that in uh, on, on on in the cars on the Third Avenue L, they had ceiling fans. Yes. Remember that? Okay. Yes. Did you ever get a tag on a ce on the ceiling fan? No, but I did destroy the um, uh, what was that Statue of Liberty? Oh, we went on a school trip. Talk about that, yeah. We went on a school trip, and um, I had some of my friends. I said, "Look, I'm gonna hit the statue, hit the you know hit her, and but you guys gotta watch my back." So they would watch my back, and they said, "Go and I'm Sharma sixty five and." We had to walk the damn thing. We, we we were in a class trip. You know, we didn't know they even had elevators. We discovered they had elevators uh, when it was too late. <laughs> we had to walk down the stairs. But um, yeah, I I rode all, I hit her all the way up. Wow! All the way up. Wow! So, uh, and I never thought to take pictures because I was a kid then. Yeah, yeah. We're just, we were just having fun. Yeah, right. yeah. Usually in, in our era, in the early era, uh, like you know, taking pit. See the whole thing with the um, it's 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 a presumptive thing now because it's it's a popular thing and it's gone worldwide and such like that. And so you know, pictures it become a, like a commodity. But in our era, um, we weren't doing it uh, to be in a documentary or a book. Or, no. or to be interviewed and, and No, we were just it. doing it because we were kids that was having fun and we wanted to see our name pretty much up in lights mm -hmm. with, on the train. No lights, but <clears throat> right. I, I can remember <laughs> I can remember we would be at Simpson Street train station. And that was back in the days when the hoes used to be out there and the pimps would be out there. Yeah. And if you remember the light the light fixtures they they were on they were on like a pole and they bent over and they had a little caging thing around it and we would go in there and take all the bubs out and just throw them at the homes. Mm -hmm. Talking about the end of the stations and stuff, yeah, <laughs> light bulbs. <laughs> Crazy. At Simpson yeah. Street train oh, station, yeah. uh -huh. we would do that. <laughs> wow. mm -hmm. And then the pimps would of course come up and chase. <laughs> and y'all run on the tracks, right? Run on the tracks. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. So, um, um, now, um, talking about like you know not taking pictures and you know not really being interested in interviews and, and and documentaries and stuff like that in the early years, um, um, UGA, right? How did you become associated with UGA? Well, it was started by Hugo Martinez. He was a college student, and. Uh, I was told by Ray, you know, that come on and join, and uh, that's how I became associated with uh, UGA. Who, who other members were? Um, do you remember that? Phase two, Coco one forty four, uh, SJK, Ray B, Phase. Okay, there we go. Let me grab my glasses. Yes, I'm of, a, I, I'm of the age that I need my I glasses, see, I, reading I glasses. See you in there too. Of course. Okay. Yeah, now, here's a picture. Try not to do it after. Well, Kurt, you coming up with these oldies? <laughs> yeah, I did research. Yeah, yeah, you did. You did your homework. I got some more questions. Too. Okay, we have Coco 144. Lee 163, we had Regan, we had Rick 2, Raby 954, Stitch 1, Phase 2, Kano, me of course, Bug 170, SJK, Chicken Wayne, Stay High 149, uh -huh. Snake 1, Nova, and Hugo is at the bottom right. 1973. That was 1973. Wow. You'd already been writing for good period by that. Yeah, point. and he, he told us, Oh, if you stop writing, we'll I'll give you this and we'll give you paint and 
I paid no mind to that because oh, I that's, still that's, continue that's, to work. That is true. Yeah, that is true. that that's what job. that was what what Ray and them told me. Ray said he said, "Oh, we'll give us this if we don't, you know, hit the trains." And I, he never told that to me. Yeah. But this is what was told to me, and um, I was like, you know, okay, I'm gonna still write. So I'm gonna that. take his markers, and his paints, and his canvas, and I'm going hitting. So what your guys do? What, well, what, what did y'all have show? He 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 got us. I I was in Deuce Coop Ballet. Deuce Coop. That was at City Center with the Joffrey Ballet Company. Mm -hmm. Oh, fancy. So, yeah, it didn't last long. <laughs> I mean, the concept was nice, but the fumes were killing, the fumes were killing the dancers. <laughs> <laughs> they had these big, giant rolls of paper, and we would get on stage, and we would just write our names, and we would write on the paper, and the paper's constantly rolling. While they're dancing, right? While they're dancing. <laughs> the spray paint was killing the poor dancers. Wow. <laughs> killing the poor dancers. So, it lasted a little while. So, like, multiple performances, I guess. Yeah, right? yeah. But, but I don't know what happened to that. That I don't know. You gotta ask Hugo. He may have it. Everybody says that. <laughs> no, ask Hugo. He may have it. He may, have it. Wow. he may. He may have it. I wouldn't be surprised if, he, if I was him. I would have kept it. I certainly would have. Yeah. So. So we're you doing black books at that time. No, no black books. Just putting your name up. Just putting your name up. Did y'all do anything else with UG, or that was the main thing? Um, you know, um, Hugo. By that time, he had kicked me out <laughs> because um, I wouldn't do any thing on canvas for him. He said, if you don't do anything on canvas, you, you're going to go. Of course, and I got to tell you this story. This is going to be a good one. I'm going to love this. Okay. I was mad as hell. And I told Ray B, I said, I'm going to get that motherfucker. You go have a cat. I told Ray, I said, watch my back. I took tissue. And I went and dipped out, got cat shit out of it. And I put the cat shit in the sleeves of Hugo's coat jacket. Oh. <laughs> you know what happened. Goodbye. <laughs> I got him back. <laughs> Where was the studio at? For, um, UG. Well, it initially started, it was Hugo's apartment. Mm -hmm. He was on, what was he on, West End? What was it, 89th? Yeah, it was 89th, because I remember writing his son's name, Eric, on that, at, at the Dusku Ballet. I wrote Eric 89. And uh, <clears throat> a few years back, Eric said, he, he always wondered, wanted to know who put his name up. And he was, he said, you know what, Charmin, I wanted to know who put my name up. I said, that was me. He said, I've been, he said, 20, 30 years, I'm still wondering who did it. I said, it was me. Wow. I, I remember writing 89 because they lived on 89th Street and West End Avenue. So that was the first location where he got yeah. most of the kids to come there. And I don't exactly remember where the studio was. I remember being there, and I remember putting cat shit in the sleeves of his jacket. I think the studio was on 103rd floor or something like that. There, no, it was another place he had before That's that. That's where we used to go, 103rd, I think, in Broadway. So another place before that. I think, huh? I think it was another place. Yeah, my brother used to go there. Yeah, yeah. but he, he had booted me out. He gave me the big old boot. I you, gave him the big old shit. <laughs> Do you remember um, what your thoughts were when you heard the name for the first time, United Graffiti Artist, and, and what your thoughts were about that word graffiti? No, at that time, um, because they started, you, the mayor, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. said, oh, this graffiti is terrible, uh -huh. graffiti, graffiti, graffiti. But we still called it right. Absolutely. Because I never asked anyone. I didn't go up to you and say, what you graffiti? <laughs> I said, what you write? That's right. Well, your brother, he, I said, what do you write? He said, AJ 161. I said, you're a toy. 
And I say within a few days, maybe a week, two weeks, I don't know. I saw nothing but AJ 161. He put in work. When I called him a toy, AJ put in work. Okay, so said, I guess he said she will that, never that call me a toy. toy. I mean, you didn't get up. Yeah. Okay. You were a toy. Yeah. You were just toying around. Yeah. Putting you your just had nothing to do with the way you broke your legs. No, no. It had nothing to do with that. Toy meant that you don't get up. Okay. You're a beginner. Get yeah. out of here. But yeah. technically, we were all toys at one point. But I remember meeting him and telling okay. him. So another started. terminology, um, hot one ten. What did that mean? Raby one one. That was Raby nine fifty four. If you went over his shit, he went over yours. <laughs> <laughs> he just hot one ten. You hot one ten. And then hot one ten became so popular that everybody was hot one ten. So if you went over somebody's stuff. They just put hot one ten. Nobody knew who hot one ten was. <laughs> and it was no one, right? <laughs> <laughs> wow. You went over someone's stuff, Hot 110. Wow. I have 110 a few people. I have 110 some people just because I didn't like them. I'm like, oh, I don't like this guy. <laughs> so I didn't know them for a pan of, can of paint, but, you know, I don't know. When you're a kid, you do silly stuff. So, so what about that uh, donut shop where you guys would... And those yeah. dry behind donuts where you had to get hot chocolate to dip them in there because... If you sure. bit, yeah, if you bit into the dad on donut, it was nothing but crumbs. Okay. It was cr so there was a story I read Artsy about you guys meeting him. Yeah. After you bombed train. Yeah, we would go so there. Or sometimes we would go sit there at, at Clinton. We would go sit in Clinton because you could look up and see the trains going by. And sometimes it would be cold. It wasn't so much that we met at the donut shop. We just got to the donut shop to get something warm. Mm -hmm. And to have something to put in your stomach. And where where was that at? Marshall and That was Marshall Parkway. Uh uh. It was just at the Marshall yeah, Station. Yeah. On Jerome Avenue. Right in the square. In the square. Oh, right. right. You're square. right. Okay, okay, okay. You're right. You know, where the number four yard is right there. And uh, and Clinton High School is right there. Right there, yeah. Right. Uh, Clinton High School um, was um, strictly a boys' school. Down the street. The street it was Walton. It was Walton. What was it? Did you? You had? Did you? Well, no, Walton wasn't down the street. It was uh, on the other side. On the, on the other, other side. side. Walton was on. Uh, yeah, over there by Kingsbridge, almost. Yeah, Walton. Yeah, yeah. So it was. It was the girls' school. It was Walton the all was girls, girls school. school. And Clinton was the boys' That's school. where um, Tonic and uh, Tonic H to you used to go to Walton, and uh, Nadine Lionel's girlfriend, okay. Nadine, she used to go there. But you were going to Bronx High School of Science. Yeah, and I used what, to tell I used to tell Ray. I said, which was Ray? I, yeah, I told Ray, don't tell anybody I go there because I didn't want to be known as a nerd. Were Were there very many writers that went to no. Bronx High School? Of Science? Everyone was a nerd. That was the first thing. <laughs> you have to be smart. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Every time to get in that school. Yeah. So who did you meet at? Who were some of the other people that met at the donut shop? Any other names? Well, of course, Whipwap, Raby, Lonnie, um, what's the name? Uh, face Tuzo. Two. Yeah, Face Two, Tuzo. Yeah. Sometimes Wayne would come up. He didn't come up often. Not that I can recall. But yeah, Tuzo, um, Amarel, Bama, they call him. Well, Who? Steve. Purple Haze. Purple Haze, Ski. Um, so Bama would have, hang up there? Yeah, yeah. He, he started out as Amaral because his name was Richard Admiral and he would just write A-M-R-L, Amaral. That's what he's, he started out. And then I don't know, we just started calling him Bama because he used to write B-A-M-A. He Bama, did write that. Right? Bama, right? Yeah, y'all call him Bama, but we used to call him Bama. Bama, okay. So... Why don't you talk some about um, uh, how you perceived writing at the time? Did you think it had anything to do with art at all? Like, None. talk about that some. None whatsoever. I'm not an artist. Yep. You, I'm you not were a scientist, a... really, as far as people I might not know that. Yeah. 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 I, I was not an artist. And it wasn't about art yep. for us during that time. It became art later when. Those who are artistically inclined 
were able to say, oh, I can do this with this letter. Yeah. I can do that with this letter, these letters. That's when it became, you know, more art, more art style. Sure. As opposed to just tags, because we did tags. I mean, I did pieces, but I they weren't artsy pieces. Yeah, it was just your tag. Just my tag. Yeah. But I was able to make it look like a, a piece. Sure. So speaking of art, right, um, do you think UGA had something to do with that, like moving Right, no, right because now. they were doing that before he even, before Hugo even got involved. Hugo just gave them canvases, but they they were doing their art on the trains. Uh huh. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So, but I'm talking about like, like um, going into like, like galleries and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. yeah he, he he I believe that he did have something to do with that, but far as making it into to being art, the art. Uh, the canvases became were the trains. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hugo introduced, said, "Hey, I got some canvases. We can do it on these canvases." But the the trains were the art. Was 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 were the canvases? Right. So, but you didn't go with that with that gallery thing. With, with no, I, I told you, it kicked me out because I wouldn't give him anything. Yeah. And I don't know. I never trusted him. I never trusted him. I never even wanted to be in a room alone with him, which I made sure I was never alone with him. Not to say that he would do something to me or try. I just, I just never trusted him. Right. Well, I can understand that, you know, and um, and that goes along with how um, um, the kids of that generation felt about older people that um, that weren't related to us. It wasn't right? even about and, that. Edward, it's just something about him I just didn't trust. You ever get a feeling, your gut tells you, this guy ain't right. Yeah. And I just knew he wasn't right. I didn't know what he wasn't right about, but I just, I had a gut feeling, and I, I went with my feelings. Yep. Question. Sure, yeah. So, were you ever a part of any crew? I mean, obviously, staff had that many dupes going on. Did you ever join up with any crew? Well, it wasn't until later years, the X families. Ah, okay, 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 oh, okay, okay. Later years, I see. I mm -hmm. see. They and I guess they made, they made you a, a member. A member, yeah, because I the X families, you have to be invited. Uh -huh. The only person I know that wasn't invited that just made himself an X vandal was Clyde. <laughs> 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 no one invited Clyde. Clyde just said, "I'm an X vandal," and that was it. And <laughs> they went with it. Yeah. Wow. You know, it wasn't like he was bullying anybody because yeah. Joey, he's not a bully kind of guy, but Joey is who he is. Yeah. You know, I, I, I love that guy too. That's funny. I love, I love all my ex vandal members. Yeah. I do. So during those days, did you run into uh, the Gary, Wiki Gary? Because he was Eugene. Wiki Gary, Wiki Gary was mainly in Brooklyn. He was a Brooklyn guy. And so I really didn't, like I said, by the time some of these guys had come in, I had been kicked out. But oh, I was yeah. there. All right, you think you can. I was yeah. there, but I, you know, I, I left my mark. I was in Deuce Coupe Valet, and you have to know that. Hey, Sharma was here. We did a beautiful thing with hitting um, Hugo's bathroom. I, I didn't do anything artsy, but I, my letters were really nice that I signed in his bathroom. Now, that was the only thing I would write on for Hugo. For Hugo, I just wouldn't do anything on a canvas for him. Yeah. I just wouldn't. I just never trusted that guy. All right, so here's, uh, it's wait a minute. Like you you, you asking all the questions. This no. man has some questions. Because yeah. Edward, I know you you can talk. Let me let me this let me let me let me let this man because so, Kurt. I did my research, right? Mm -hmm. Just people taking pictures of the work. Yes. So what were your thoughts when you were out there doing the work? You like Cameras, but some some of your friends carry cameras. Or no, cameras none of my friends, none of us carry cameras. Yeah, none of us carry cameras. I didn't find out until about the pictures until many years later. But um, some of the guys, like I think it was Lava, God rest your soul, Lava, he would take pictures. My thing was when we start, when the cops really started coming down on us about riding on the subways, I just became a little more creative. 
where I knew the guys, when they would look at the guys, they would automatically, oh, you're a guy. Me, I would put on a miniskirt and I would have my bag and I would be out there on the tracks uh-huh. painting. So when the cops came, I sat right up on the train station in my miniskirt, they would look at me, look at my little skinny <laughs> legs, kept it moving. <laughs> if you're on the train with the skin for the tracks in the miniskirt, that would be a, yeah. a sight. I, I, yeah, I was smart. I'd have on my sneakers, and then, of course, my sneakers were covered in paint, so I would just take my shoes out and put on my shoes and sit on them. <laughs> so, now you know there's a photographer, John Neer. Mm-hmm. He's got a picture of your work on the wall. And he did a famous book, right? Mm-hmm. Paper graffiti. Did you ever see that book? Did you no, ever- I've never seen that book. That's a world famous book. I've never so- seen it. I've never seen mm-hmm. it. Oh my God. Yeah, I'm going to show you a picture of. Uh- yeah, you pull. You pull. Yep. Yeah, I am. Oh, yeah, I remember seeing this. When I was John Nair. That was John Nair? Yeah, he okay, did. I didn't 19, know. It was. 1974, I think, is when that book yeah. came out. Yeah. But that, that, that photo could be from 73 or something like that. That's yeah. the first draft book, right? That's the yeah. first draft. Yeah. yeah. Now that I remember. Yeah. Yeah. Now, where would you where would you store your um, your paint and markers? Uh, would you store them at your, at your, at your, in your room at your, in your house? I stored them in my house. Wow, that's, that's bold. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I've always known that sometimes if you want to hide something from someone, in put it right sight. in their face. Yeah. Put it in plain sight. Yeah. So my mother had this picnic basket, a, a picnic bag. Yeah. It was insulated. So I would throw all my markers in it. All my markers in it. My paint, I would leave at Ray B's house. Yeah. yeah. But my markers. Wow. So my father, somehow... He never saw them in there. He knocked the bag off the Uh-oh. where my mother had it hanging. And of course, all my markers rolled out. Now, my father, being the creative guy he is, instead of throwing them out, he took all the markers, hammered them, and put them back in the bag and hung them up. And when I went to go in that bag, that said, you won't be scribbling on the trains today, little girl. Ray, my dad, look what he did to my markers. Come on, we're going out of pearl paint. Did Did your parents, um, aside from you know the Saint Athanasius incident, did they give you much flack for writing ever? Well, I kind of kept it hidden. I see. You know, it was like, after I got busted with all of those damn markers, my dad caught me. I had to figure out a better way to hide my marker. Yeah. So I, I would hide them under the dog bed. Yeah. My dog had a bed. It was a big dog, so we had a big you bed. <laughs> and I would stick the markers Very under clear. his bed. <laughs> Do you remember um, around what time it was when you did your first... Uh, piece on the outside of the train had to be probably like 1970 okay yeah had to be 71 yeah. 70 71 yeah. I'm gonna say more 71 but throughout all this time like you said you were still putting your tag up inside ev- inside the train everywhere inside, you could find, everywhere right? I could Would, I'd, I'd have written on you if you were there no matter if Kurt was there, I would have used my opaque, my white opaque mark. Right. Yeah. Were, were you very much into into writing on walls or or other places around the neighborhood? Not so much, because yeah. I knew you know the walls would get painted over, or yeah. the super would wash the wall, or whatever. And then, of course, I didn't want my parents seeing you know. My name. Did they on know the what walls. you wrote? Yeah, my dad knew. <laughs> said, "Oh, Miss Little Sherman." <laughs> wow. So, so when you put your name up, not only would you, you know, risk getting famous among the writing community, but you'd also risk your dad. <laughs> seeing well, the good like, thing was my dad drove to work. Oh, okay. I see. 
my dad drove to work. I so see. That was the good thing. Was... And he had seen all of that on the subway. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, do you remember about what time it was when you started getting out of writing? Um, were you still in high school? Mm, maybe about 75, I think. Okay, 75. 74, 75. 75, maybe. yeah. So I got out of it. I, you know, I got interested in boys. I was started getting into fashion and getting my hair done and what have you, and painting my own nails. We didn't have all these salons that they have now. Yeah, sure. We just you just painted your own nails and you put a little lipstick on. And, and were other writers that you knew from the neighborhood were they still into writing at the time, or they were getting they out too? had started to getting getting out because they really began being interested in girls uh -huh. and wanted to do little summer youth jobs and yeah. make money and you made your own little money and you would buy your clothes. You know, you would save, some of us would save their money for school clothes because like I said, because some of them, they didn't have both parents. They yeah. just had their, their mother, yeah. single mother. So they, were pretty much they couldn't they couldn't have the things that others had sure. others that had two parents did you know anyone uh any other writers who uh had to you know serve any time in juvie or in spofford or anything like that i think ray b went to spofford one for a few days yeah yeah that's it huh that was it and I remember when Wendell got caught, his father, well, his father was a detective. Oh. He didn't want to go home. <laughs> that man would come get me. Whoa. So, super cool. Super cool. Super cool. Wow. His father was a detective. New York City detective. Wow. Um, go ahead, Craig. For, for, uh, for clarity, is Ray B. 954 in uh, UGA? Is that the same? He name? was in UGA. He was in UGA as well. Wow. You got the type. Yeah. Yeah. He had the big afro. He had the big afro. Ray B had the big fro. That guy was like, he could do some everything. Whatever he did, he did it well. If it played pool, he could play pool. I remember Michael Santos, Cloud 135's brother. Used to be, uh, what was that? Used to be a boxer. Wow, what was his, what's that, um, uh, for boxing that the guys were into. Golden Gloves? Yeah. He was into Golden Gloves. Uh, and yeah. Um, not maybe um, Cloud's brother, okay. Dave. God rest your soul, Dave, but I have to tell the truth. And he hated Ray. He hated Ray because Ray could play ball real good. Ray could shoot pool real good. Ray could do just about anything real good. And and Ray was like a, he should have been a Harlem Globetrotter, because I remember him being on a basketball court, and he would bounce the ball off somebody's head, and it would go in the basket. Wow. He hit you in the ass with the ball. <laughs> he hit you in the ass with the ball, and shake and bake on you, and then lay up. <laughs> you know, he, and Dave hated him. And I remember they were playing basketball, and you know Ray, he was just he was a trash talker. He said, you know, watch what I do to you. Watch what I do to your man. Watch what I do to your face. <laughs> <laughs> like that. So Dave got really mad and Dave pushed him. And, and I saw that Ray wasn't, he didn't, he wasn't the kind of guy who liked to fight. You know, he wanted to just have a good time. But Dave pushed him. And I mean, Ray beat the crud out of him. I mean, Ray's hand, he was. You know, he's he's this golden glove boxer. Ray was popping him like pop, pop. And he was just toying with him. Yeah, wow. Ray was toying with him. Ray didn't want to knock him out. Then finally Ray got tired and bang. That's it. <laughs> he was on the car. Ray was like, he was still on the car. <laughs> FM, let's get out of here. So what did a rabies tag look like? Oh, man. Give me a pen. 
I could I, I I haven't seen one picture in all my research of made in town. Because like you said, a lot of people weren't taking pictures of the yes, work. So Oh you you gotta take the I know, no, no, I was just do, doing it. Oh, you showed me that like, oh, Right, you know I know about a daggone marker. What the hell? <laughs> oh, and this one that? over here, point like, and you know, I don't need help with y'all to pull this daggone top off. <laughs> what in the shavings? Yeah. You know, Let me look at the tip. Let me see. All right, here we go. That's a tiny tip. A which one. I know. This I know this one's a big one. Crown. Used to do the crown. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Charmin, did you ever did you ever start adding little elements like arrows or crowns or anything to your tag? Yeah, I did. Uh, let's see. Yeah. No, Ray passed away. Oh. I missed that man. So I never met his brother, right? Baby's brother. brother. His brother was older than him or younger? Younger. Two. Oh, okay, okay, I see. I see. So, yeah, even though you started out just, you know, writing your name, you started adding little, little flares to it, too, the, huh? the six down. That's and nice. And the N, like that. I see that, connecting the M and, yeah. the, and the six. Yeah, the that's six, really nice. Yeah. Uh, so, did you keep living, were you still living in the Bronx after you got out of writing? Or New York City, I guess. Yeah, I, I moved from uh, from one sixty fifth between Ho Avenue and Fail Street. We moved to uh, Story Avenue. Oh, S T O R Y. Story Avenue. Oh, what is that? Soundview, I think. Yeah. Right? yeah. Well, it's not quite in Soundview, but it's. Awesome. I guess you could say that it's in that area. Okay. 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 And do you remember what your thoughts were when you started seeing more and more elaborate? pieces on the trains. I was like, damn, these guys are really doing their thing. I used to love to look at it. It was when they started going with this stuff that you could barely read. Yeah. It, 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 for me, I mean, it looked beautiful. Yeah. It did. I have to, I can't take that away from them. But I didn't care for it because I couldn't see what the name was. was so and bad. it was so hard for me. I would have to literally look at the train for, you know, it would have to be in a layup. Yeah, yeah. But for it to go by, I couldn't see what it was. Yeah. And for us, it was, we wanted you to know who we were. We wanted you to see Charmin 65, Staff 161, Bot 707, uh -huh. Solid uh -huh. 1. We wanted you to see that it was our name. But a lot of the guys, they, they, they're so fancy now. I like, again, I love the work. Some of it is just so difficult for me to see. And now that I'm older, senior citizen, you know, <laughs> the eyes you see, I had to whip out my glasses. To... <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Um, and I think I think now is a good time to ask you things that you'd like to set the record straight on as far as uh, the history of writing goes and your place in the history of writing. Okay. Oh, girl, you're not going to be happy, but I'm going to tell the truth and shame the devil. Lady Pink, you were not the first one who ever got on the tracks and did it. No, you didn't, girlfriend. You started in 80. You say 79, but I believe it was more like 80. But I'm not going to quibble about it. But you were not the first because I was doing it in the 70s. As Pat, Barbara, Eva, Michelle. Tonic, H2O. We were in the 70s. 
71, 72, 73, 74. You say you started in 79. Do the math. Anybody with half a brain could figure it out. And you say, oh, Sherman, I didn't say that, but you are, you allow people to say that. You don't correct them. So you pretty much perpetuate the lie. So that means if you allow them to say it and you don't correct them, you're just as guilty as they are. You're worse even. Don't hate. Appreciate. <laughs> Other things you'd like to set the record straight on with the history of writing? Um, not that I could think of, but if you throw some questions at me. Okay. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Um, well, I think, I think in just you narrating a lot so far, it's, you know, setting the record straight on a lot of, um, different things. Kurt, you yeah, have no, a specific no question. question. Yeah, no, Come question. on, Kurt. No, listen. Come you on. Go to the Bronx, they have this culture called hip hop and, uh, you know, the DJ and, Oh, yeah. MC, I guess you ran into a few of So what, Absolutely. what was your relationship or how did you experience hip-hop in the Bronx? I loved it. I loved it. I mean, it was, we weren't so much into guns and killings and stabbings. It was all about the music. It was about the girls getting out there and dancing. I'm not talking about twerking. I'm talking about dancing. Yeah. You know, women were, they were sexy sultry even but not so vulgar like i mean it's cool what the girls do this is their time so their time is different from mine just as my mom's time was different from mine you know and my dad's time you know they thought it was my dad said it was he he thought it was a big thing if he saw a woman's ankle yeah like with us, we had the big afro with the big shoes. We wore the little tube tops and the, the what was that? The halter tops. And now hot it's pants. hot pants, mini skirts. Yeah, yeah. Now it's thongs. You just have your whole booty out. Like when I went to South Beach, all I saw was ass. <laughs> I mean, you know, we, me personally, I think it's nicer to, to, to dress a little more down. The less you see, the more interested a man is. But for me, I, I, you see everything. You know, like the guys now, they don't do what they used to do in my times. Guys would take you to a movie, take you to eat, take you out to dinner. Now the guy's just like, let me hit that. <laughs> and when I don't mean hit it like this, so it, it's, yeah, you know, it's, it's cool. different. Yeah, it's, it's, cool. I, uh... it's different. I mean, I, I'm not knocking them, but that their way is not my way. So I say, to you be your way, and to me be mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the court is kind of the cool herc. Oh, yeah. cool. Uh, you remember cool herc? Of course. I would I remember cool herc? Okay. So um, you remember when he was writing? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So um. Well, he was a toy back then, too. Yeah, well, well, yeah, like you said, that we all start off like that. But, uh, <laughs> but he never really got up. You know, because he came out, yeah. He, he uh, was, his I, thing was more DJing. Right. That was his thing. Yeah. That was where he because aspired to be. Jams. You know what? I'm going to pinch you. <laughs> uh, of course, come on now. Who doesn't? Yeah. If you came up in that time, you had to go to a cool herd joint. You had to go to see Grandmaster. Uh -huh. You know, you had to see that. That was D. something Hollywood. that we did. D come on now. Mm -hmm. What was the 371? Well, that's what it yeah. 371, Club 371. Yep. You had to go to Disco Fever. Funky Four Plus One. Funky Four Plus One. The fabulous, the furious what? What was uh, it? Furious the Five. Furious Five? Uh-huh. Come on now. Did, did you ever go to any uh, jams in the Bronxdale houses? That might have been a little too too out of your way for you with Disco King Mario. I remember Disco King Mario. Yeah, yeah. But I didn't go to any of his jams. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I remember him. Yeah. He's, he's someone that, that sometimes people... 
don't talk about because Bronx Dale's a little hard. Yeah, to Bronx to Dale, Bronx River. Um, yeah. um, um, Rankin, like, like uh, Frosty Freeze. Yes. Crazy Legs. Legs. You ever yes. Met them? Like, yes. Back in the days. Yes, I remember going to see them. Mm -hmm. But if anyone ever really knows about break dancing, black black kids were doing yeah, break dancing before yeah. the Spanish children were doing break dancing. Black kids got out of it. I don't know why, but black kids were break dancing, and then the Latinos they came in and they killed it. Mm -hmm. They killed it. They they went into the break dancing thing and they friggin' killed it. But I remember. Before there were Latinos doing break dancing, it was black kids that were doing the break dancing. That's interesting uh, that you make that point. Now, on, on um, the Rice Bench on 49th Street in Grand Concourse, mm -hmm. right? Um, the majority of the you hung out there, right? So, uh, the out majority there. of the kids that hung out there, right? Uh, um, where were they from, basically? They were from all over. Yeah. You couldn't just pinpoint one person because you even had Brooklyn writers who came to the bench. Yeah. yeah, you had Brooklyn writers who came up there. So it was a combination of all of us. It was just who would go there that day. Just like at, at Clinton. It was just who would go there that day. Now, of all the pieces that you did on trains, are there any that stick out to you particularly as well? It was a blue one, blue and black. Okay, yeah. Talk about that some. Um, I just remember, it, it's just one that, it was big for uh, me. Okay. It wasn't a top. I remember I called myself, this is before the top to bottoms even started. Yeah. I did a, I, what I would consider a top to bottom. I just took this paint can. Went all the way up to the top, but it was a skinny line. It wasn't like the top to bottom that these guys do. They, you know, these guys were killing it. They were really elaborate, beautiful. I used to look at the coloring. I was like, damn, these guys. I said, shit, what we were doing, we was just scribbling. These guys are really doing the damn thing. And yeah. But as to your question, yeah. it was a blue piece that I did. Do you remember what line that was on? Uh, it was on the four line. On the four line. Okay. I'll never forget it. It was on the four wow. line. Wow. Because I saw it come by when we was at, uh, where were we? At Clinton. We were at, uh, yeah, it was, I think that's the floor, four line, right? Yeah, that's the yeah. four line, yeah. Okay, okay, I see. Um, Kurt, do you, yeah, you have yeah, more yeah. writing uh, questions? Yeah. I know most, a lot of artists don't have a... <clears throat> A quantity of trains that they have tagged. So over the time that you were active, could you put a number on how many? No, trains? I couldn't. I could not put a number. No, I can't do that. But I, I understand that there's guys who have hundreds, thousands. Yeah. You know, some say five thousand. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, yeah, that's a lot. I've heard, you know, somebody said they had five, over 5,000 pieces. And that's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. So the style period where you have the Blade and the oh, they, Faze, they were, that's like years after you had Blade, style. Blade and Faze are two different entities. Because Faze wasn't doing those big, ginormous blockbuster pieces like Blade was. He just wasn't doing that. And there, I, I don't know, when did Blade start? Blade started all oh, like uh, right after the signature era, right? Okay, it, what year? Yeah, give me a number. So that's like more or less like uh, uh, 71. 72. Just I as, don't recall no, just, seeing that in 71 and 72. Are you sure? Do you yeah, recall just, seeing those well, big blockbuster pieces well, in just, 71 and 72 on the train? Well, he didn't, he didn't start like that. Okay, right? that's what. Yeah, that's yeah. my question. My question is, when did he start doing those? Oh, oh that's like, like, like 70, 70, 73, 74, 75. Right? He I'm going to say maybe. Yeah. I don't even think it was that early. I, I'm going to say it was maybe... Because the first, the first 75. piece was around 70, 72, the outline bubble letter piece building, 
And then like that cup did the whole train whole cars? No, no, no. No, that's what I'm asking. Yeah. Whole cars. Whole when cars it, came in like 74, 75, 76. Like those 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 years. Yeah. You go stay stay high one forty nine did a whole car. Stay high one forty nine. Yeah, say how I'm putting on the whole car and going to mm. front come um, uh, yeah. the Facebook page. Right, but that, <laughs> that that, that's, yeah. that's not like an outline. Oh, that's not outline. Okay. That's like, like you know, fat calf and then a retrace. A retrace, okay. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. what I did, a fat calf yeah. Yeah. and a retrace. Okay, all right. Yeah, okay. you're talking about like an outline. Yeah, like an outline, yeah. Well, yeah. oh, let me share this with you yeah, guys. Yeah, 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 please. About the fat calves. Well, we discovered we could get a larger spray, a wider spray from fat caps. We would use, go get the Jifon. That was an oven cleaner. And Niagara, the starch. That was, you know, your parents starched their shirts and their clothes. Um, My mom, (laughs) she went to, there was a supermarket, E&B. She went in there and she bought a can of starch. So she doesn't think to look and see if the top is on there. She just knows that it's going to be there. Yeah, yeah. She came home. She took it off. She said, well, where in blazes is the, the, the cat? Yeah. So she took it back to the store because she was annoyed. She said, how come you have, you know, this with no cap on it? So the manager, he gave her another one. He said, oh, we're going to make sure the cap is on here. He opened it up. No cap. He went through all of those cans. <laughs> there was not a cap on any of them. <laughs> Gone. Gone. They'd all been racked. Because <laughs> we were going, just uh-huh. pop the cap, take it off, take it off. So <laughs> you were rack the cap. We would rack the caps. Uh-huh. And my where mother else would you get under- My mother couldn't right. understand for the life of, why would a person take all those caps? <laughs> what, to- what are they going to do with those caps? <laughs> she had no clue. Her daughter was one of the culprits. <laughs> Wow. Wow. Yeah. Uh, the oven cleaner. Uh huh. She would go in there for a thing of oven cleaner. She got to the point where she would look to open it up to see if there was a cap on yeah. it. She couldn't figure out. She said, Who is taking and why are they taking and what are they doing? Yeah. She couldn't figure it out for the life of her. And I, of course, I couldn't tell her. Oh, Mom, we used them to put on our spray paint cans. <laughs> yeah, the whole thing is a caps. Nice. Want a graffiti store? <laughs> like, yeah, you know, now they sell us caps. Yeah, they sell all the sizes. Yeah, they sell the 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 thin spray, yeah, the yeah. wide spray. The... So, what do you what are your thoughts on you know this activity that you did for such a long time when, when you were growing up for fun to get your name out, all of that writing. Um, and what it's become now. Um, why don't you talk a little bit about your perspective on how it's changed and what your feelings are. It has are. changed. Um, I say it changed for the better. Yeah. I mean, change, life is about change. So after we had did our thing and then you had the schemes and, the, 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 you know, uh, the block, the um, oh gosh, the blades doing those whole cars and the wreaths and the, uh-huh. all of them doing those whole cars. <coughs> I thought it was beautiful. Yeah. I appreciated the work and the time that these guys spent on those cars. I really appreciated it. I loved it, and I still love it. Even now, every now and then. You'll catch some freight cars. Some some foreigners come here and they do a whole damn train. Hell with a car. They do the entire train. Uh-huh. Film it. I appreciate those guys. I really Absolutely. do. Yeah. Absolutely. I respect their work, the time, the effort, the thought, everything that was into it. And now, so you know they had to purchase that paint. Sure. Because stealing paint is oh, much harder now. Yeah. They're in cages and Big Brother's watching. Uh-huh. Yeah. Cameras everywhere. They buy a discount now. You know? Yeah, so now what they do is that a lot of them go to um, store. As a matter of fact, I bought 50 cans. Um, I got it through a friend 
uh, an ex-Vandal brother, Ree, he orders, uh, what is it? Uh, he orders racks of paint, skids. skids. Wow, okay. Thank you. Skids. He orders skids of paint. So now that we have legal walls, we have guy like like I said, reorders a skid. Sometimes reorders a few skids. And the, the willpowers, the, Ree is still doing his thing. You know, like I said, the schemes, the the team, the the cades. They're doing their, they're doing it. They're doing it. These guys are artists. Yeah, yeah. They are artists. And um, I appreciate all the work that they do. Scheme was a little something else. He 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 lived right in Esplanade, so he could go right go right to the three yard. Uh huh. He go through the three yard and head home. <laughs> so did, did you watch him in the movie Star Wars? Star Wars because that came out in eighty. You. Uh, no, I didn't, you know, I never got a chance to watch Star Wars. I never got a chance, no. Man, I just never got a chance to watch it. What was that one that Lee, Lee Quinones was in? That was with that, um, Wild Style. Wild, Wild, Style. Wild, Style. Wild Style. I watched that one. And I just watched that one recently. I'm going to say recent. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so you had a family. You were looking back. Family no, stuff. but I still admired the work that they did. Yeah. Now... Have you have you gotten back into writing in recent years, or are you working on anything right now? No, I've done a couple of canvases, and I did sell a couple. Yeah. But um, sometimes these guys that the, the I I was I had gotten hooked up with a gallery, and the person that hooked me up I'm not going to mention their name they wanted fifteen percent, and I was fine with that because I made my deal with that person. He says, "Oh, I'm gonna I got a gallery I can put you in." I just need 15% of the sale. Okay. When I get to the gallery, uh, the sale was made. The guy says, oh, well, I get 50%. And I said, fuck you and him. Give me my shit. This, these were my exact words. Give me my shit and I'll keep my stuff. And then he said, then the guy who wanted the initial 15%, because he never told me about this gallery guy. Yeah. Yeah. And I know I don't feel that I should give you fifty percent and then give him fifteen percent. That's sixty five percent. That's insane. That is insane. So I asked him to give me my give me my work back, and um, he said, "Well, I already sold it." I said, "Well, you're certainly not going to get fifty percent." He said, "No, I won't take the fifty percent." He said, "I won't take anything." Oh, real nice guy. Yeah. yeah, but the person that you know I had made my deal with, he said he'd never do business with him again. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I said wow. I had no idea. I said if I had known, I would have made my deal with you. I wouldn't have gone for fifty percent. No. Yeah. I would have given you the fifteen percent. That's right. But because I made my deal with him, he made it seem like it, it was okay. The 15% was cool. That was it. Yeah. But when he told me 50%, I said, absolutely not. No way. Mm. No friggin' way. Yeah. Yeah. Kurt, do you have other, or, or staff, or, or bot, any other questions about writing? I have a final question that I, we ask at the end of all these, but just want to see if any of you all have further Kurt, questions. Kurt, anything else? Um... Have you thought about branding Charlotte 65 since we're yes. in this area of branding? Yes. <laughs> yes, I have a few ideas. I have some, uh, more than ideas. I have some uh, 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 iron in the fire. No, that's great. That's great. I mean, you have a compelling story, so uh, I, I love the story. You're getting it straight, so uh, yeah, keep, keep, some... keep going. <laughs> Thank you, Kurt. Yeah. I love you. You know that, right? <laughs> Great. The, the final question I have for you is, um, what does the Bronx mean to you? The Bronx means to me is a place where I had some of the best times in my life. It means I had cookouts. I had, I had my dad who was a working, he had to work. Um, but we had, I also got to give this accolade 
to Dougie Fresh's dad, um, uh, Hammurabi, mm. Hammurabi Bay. Hammurabi built us a basketball court. Wow. He put it up so that we could have some place to play because sometimes our parents didn't want us going down to the park because, you know, the gangs and what have you. They want, they felt better where they could look out the window. Hey, get it inside. It's time. Dinner. Homework. Whatever. And I want to give him that. He, uh, he got us our first summer youth jobs. He was very instrumental in trying to keep us on the straight and narrow. Yeah. He's a good man. He is a good man. Yeah. Hamarati, I love you. Mom, my mom, my dad, love you. I don't think I could have chosen any better parents than you guys. My sisters, my brothers, I love you for tolerating me <laughs> and for protecting me from daddy. Um, I miss you, mom and dad. I don't want to cry. So, yeah. I think about my parents. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, are there any final thoughts you'd like to share before we stop the recording? just want to say if there be love in this world be kind to one another tell the truth and just have a good time and share your wisdom that's all I can think of right now well thank you so much Charmin it's really an honor